up. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind, I've got my mind. I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Jesus, someday I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. See my Jesus someday. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go this way. I made up my mind. I made up my mind to go this way. The rest of Jesus set me free. Jesus set me free. 
set me free. Jesus set me free. I can go. Set me free, set me free. No, 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 no. My Lord Jesus set me free. No, 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 no. He set me free from all shame, from all sin. I cannot be born, cannot be born. No, 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 no. I cannot be born. We cannot be bound. No more. No more sin. Jesus set me free. He set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Oh, go by one, go by one, go by one. I stand no longer with you. You're not precious of sin. I stand no longer with you. From glory to glory, somebody is glad to be in this sanctuary this morning and not in the mortuary. Shout hallelujah! Please, let's put our hands together for Jesus as we take our seat. This morning, we are going to be calling ourselves to worship at this special communion service as we read responsibly from Psalm 125. Please open your Bible with me to Psalm 125, and we are going to be reading responsibly. I read verse 1, you read verse 2. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. Now verse 2. For the rock of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Now verse 4. Now together let us read verse 5 with joy. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. The Lord of the righteous, let the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Today, the God of sanctification shall say amen. Together, let us again read verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not sanctify you holy. You are welcome. From glory to glory. Please, let's be attentive to the faith tabernacle announcement. The prophetic focus for the month is only the sanctify I ordain to be glorified. Shall we declare together? Number one, today is our special communal service. We should all get set for sanctification of our spirit, soul, and body through the cleansing power in his world and the mystery of the communal table. Number two, praise the Lord. Christmas service holds on Friday, 25th December, 2015. There shall be only two services. For service 7 to 9 a.m. and second service 9.15 to 11.15 a.m. Number three, covenant hour prayer continues tomorrow Monday to Saturday. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. 
Remember, it holds in over 600 locations across Lagos, Ota, and never on. Look out for the nearest location around you and engage for your spiritual upliftment. There shall be no coming out our prayer on Friday because of the Christmas service. Number four, midweek communal service hold this Wednesday at all Zuna Fellowship Centers in Lagos and Otter. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communal. Time is 6 p.m. Number five, good news. 20 intended couple wear this weekend. That is Saturday, 26 December. Which we all are admitted to stand in the gap for them and in prayer and share in their joy. Time is 11 a.m. Number six, believer foundation class and winner Saturday foundation shall not hold this coming Monday and Saturday respectively in view of the massive movement of people this season, including teachers and officials who are to minister at the foundation class and at the WSF meetings. Number seven, all Shiloh 2050 messages are available on MP3 and DVD format. Please pick your copy from the Domino bookstores around the Tabernacle and also from the ushers. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, Brother Henry Imosemi Tokumbo. Brother Henry Imosemi Tokumbo, please come to, to the altar to share your testimony. And Ibe Precious. Ibe Precious and Brother Henry Imosemi Tokumbo. We round up with announcement. He said, I mean, praise the Lord about it. Church calendar for 2016 is out. Members can pick their copy from the ushers at the entrances and in the bookstore. Copies of From Glory to Glory 2016 car and dust sticker are also still available. Finally, number nine, praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our end of year special Thanksgiving service. That's both as a church and individual members. 2015 has been our most loaded year with all of God's goodness, mercy, and grace in dimensions never known before. Therefore, we owe God thanks. It shall be a time of celebration of God's faithfulness among his people, which shall result in the preservation and multiplication of our blessings. Everyone shall, shall come expectant for an encounter of a lifetime. We shall be holding only four services. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Quickly, in this service, it is testimony time. Quickly, Brother Ebe Precious and Brother Harry, quickly come forward. What has the Lord done? Begin with your name. My name is Imosemi Tokumbo Henry. I am here before God's people to give thanks to the God of my father, Bishop David Oyedepu, for his mighty hands upon, my, upon the life of my son. On Monday, 14 December 2015, after Shiloh, I was called by my wife from Potako that my son complained of abdominal pain and was taken to hospital. We had two separate doctors said that one of his, test his testicles was missing and it will take two hours operation to bring it out and it has to be urgent. Otherwise, it will result to prostate cancer and other related diseases. Immediately, I rejected it and asked her to cut the phone. I will call her back because that moment fear almost find its way into me. The boy is my only child for now and he is 12 years old. Then I remember the testimony of Ezekiah in Isaiah 38 and I told God that this you know. Since I joined this great commission in 2013 in my zone and in my unit, I have always been a frontliner and carrying out any instruction from the mouth of your servant, always there as if I am the pastor. and. In Shiloh, I was in the airport as, as protocol officer 24 hours, sleepless night, receiving delegates. I reminded him of his word in Exodus 23, 25, 26, Exodus 15, 26, Deuteronomy 7, 15. And I refused to accept the operation. He said, open your Bible. And he took me to Jeremiah 30, 11, 12. And, I was, finally. and joy came inside of me. Finally, I asked my wife to keep administering uh, communion to the boy. On the day of the operation, when they got there, the specialist said that nothing is wrong with this boy, that everything in him is complete. The test I could came back and the boy is okay. Praise the Lord. That negative report shall be overturned in this service. Quickly, your name, what the Lord has done. 
From glory to glory. My name is Aibe Precious. I joined this commission June 2014. I had experienced breast cyst for four years, which occurs only at night. I went to hospital for chest x-ray, nothing was found. I went to a different doctor. He told me I am suffering from partial asthmatic. That is hereditary and it has no cure but to subside. He quickly prescribed drugs for me, which I should take when the symptom arises, and ventolin inhaler. And I heard the man of God declare in one of the services, he said, sickness is not permitted to be in my body. I declared to myself, I'm not born to use inhaler. Before Shiloh 2014, my big sister called me to prepare that we are traveling to meet one prophet for my healing. And I told her, I am not traveling, Shiloh is approaching. During Shiloh 2014, Bishop Oedepo instructed us to pull down the things that must expire in our lives. We should pray specific, he blessed the mountain. With the joy in my heart, I quickly wrote, Bread sees the expiring date has come. After Shiloh, that same month, when the symptom arrived, I, told my, I tied my mountain around my neck. I didn't use the medicine, either did I touch the inhaler. From last year, Shiloh till now, to the glory of God, I am bread ceaseless. Hallelujah. Your own word shall come in this service. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. From glory to glory. This morning, it is offering time. Hallelujah. I'd like you to package your offering quickly if you have not done so. Label it and say something glorious to the Lord as we get set to offer our offerings unto the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3, it said it will purify the sons of Levi that they will and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord offerings in righteousness. As you offer to the Lord offerings in righteousness this morning, I see those offerings being multiplied into your life as harvest in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to rise on your feet quickly and lift your hand to heaven and lift your voice unto the Lord. Lord, I present my seed to you today. I ask, Lord, that you purify and, O oh Lord, cause this offering to come forth as an offering in righteousness, bringing forth a harvest as never before. Lift your voice and pray. Speak unto the Lord concerning that seed. Lord, I offer this seed in this month of sanctification as an offering in righteousness to bring forth a harvest in my life and in my direction in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you thanks and I give you praise. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, lift your hand. Father, we thank you for these precious offerings. As they are offered before you, Lord, in this month of sanctification, let it bring forth a supernatural harvest in the direction of every individual here. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Please, you may take your seat as we invite the choir to lead us into the presence of the Lord.
Lift up your two hands to heaven. One more time, celebrate the faithfulness of God in your life. For keeping you all the way since January 1 till now. And for his good hand upon your life, give him thanks. Celebrate and magnify him. There is no one like him.
genuinely from the depth of your heart, give him thanks. It's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail at not. They are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Every encounter with the world opens a new chapter to a man's life. Lord, give me an encounter by your word today that will open yet a new chapter to my life. Go ahead and pray. Lord, give me an encounter through your word today that will open yet a new chapter to my life. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. The Lord sent a word to Jacob. Give me an encounter through your word today that will open a new chapter to my life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, thank you again today. Thank you for your manifest presence in our midst. Let today be a day to be much remembered in everyone's life. Amen. Give each one of us today an encounter of a lifetime. Amen. Open a new chapter to our spiritual life today. Open a new chapter to our spiritual life today. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. You may please be seated. We've been looking at um, sanctification. A covenant gateway to glorification. And I pray that today we are all living here, each of us, with a change of raiment. Whatever displeases God must drop off our life today. Whatever displeases God must drop off from our life today. Let me also mention here before we proceed. That the Christmas service is a celebration service. All we are doing is celebrating God the Father for the gift of His Son to the world. So it's not just a service, it's a Christmas celebration service. If Christ had not come, imagine where you and I would have been. If Christ came and didn't die for our redemption, Imagine what kind of frustration we will be we'll have today. So we are coming to celebrate the gift of life. I've come that you may have life and have it at its best. The gift of life. Everyone on the street today carries a long face. Frustrated. Dejected. Perplexed. 
devastated. Only Jesus' people carry their genuine smiles everywhere. Because of uncertainties, most people live with unrest. No peace in the morning, no peace in the afternoon, no peace in the night. But for all of us who have the Prince of Peace dwelling in us, our case is different. So we come in to celebrate the gift of life. If Christ had not come, where would I have been? That's the attitude we are coming with this coming Sunday. And we're coming, I mean, this coming Friday. We're coming to celebrate. We are not coming casually. We are coming God justly. We are coming to acknowledge the gift of God to us in the person of Christ. How many understand what I'm talking about? Has Christ added any value to your life? Okay, now come and show that this coming Sunday. In case you are out of town, wherever you are, be a part of the celebration of Christ and then you never stop drawing value from it. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Also, as we heard in the announcement, next Sunday, the 27th of um, uh, December, is our global end of year Thanksgiving service. Whatever Christ has done in your life all through the year, you come in and show how much you appreciate him. Can I hear your amen? amen. You come with a heart of gratitude. No complaints, no murmuring, no grumbling. That why in church is enough to celebrate God. Some have not been to church for more than one year. I heard one of us who said he has not been in church since 2005 because of an accident that he had. You are there every day. So to complain would be to be an ingrate. We're coming on the 27th to come and show God again how much we appreciate him for taking us to the close of this year, not just seeing us through, but adding amazing value to our life. How many will say amen to that? In case you don't know, your health is your greatest value in life. That's why they say health is wealth. For anyone in the winner's family that maybe have been challenging his health, as the Lord liveth, before the 27th, you are jumping on your feet. Yeah. We'll all be here. And those two occasions are celebration occasions. What are they? You must come in smiling from your house, laughing from the gate, laughing to your seat, putting the devil to shame. Can I hear your amen? Okay. Praise the Lord. One more time, give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise. <laughs> Sanctification, covenant gateway to glorification. The anchor scripture for the month for us on the theme, only the sanctified are ordained to be glorified is Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord where there are is, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also vessels of wood and of hay, of art. But if any man and some to honor, some to dishonor. But if any man therefore purge himself from all this, he shall be a vessel to honor, sanctified and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So, sanctification is what it means, the kind of vessel that we are in the house of God. Whether vessel of honor or vessel of dishonor, the sanctification is what defines what kind of vessel a believer is in the house of God. What kind of vessel he is in the hand of God. But it's not enough to understand that message. It's important also to know that 
even glorification is in degrees. For there is one glory of the sun, under glory of the moon, under glory of the stars, and one star different from another, another star in glory. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 41. That establishes the fact that glory is in levels. And that's why next year we are going from glory to glory. Changing levels in the realm of glory. In the name of Jesus, you will never know the meaning of shame or reproach. Everything that makes people ask, where is your God, will be turned to a testimony in your hand. Because by divine agenda, everyone in the winner's family is ordained to go from glory to glory in the year 2016. And what you are doing right now is laying a sure foundation to actualize that agenda in our lives. The foundation of God standard sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that I is, and let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So glorification demands a departure from iniquity. How much we depart from iniquity will determine how much glory we are ever going to be entitled to experience. And if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. So we must ensure a solid foundation to be full beneficiaries of God's agenda of glorification for the year 2016. And that's what we are doing here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, he said, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Only what the word calls foundation is foundation. Any other thing is fake. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the foundation of sanctification required for our glorification in the year 2016, no one shall miss out on it. No one will take it lightly. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's also important for us to recognize that we are in a spiritual conflict in our quest to live a sanctified life. We are in a battle against the mystery of iniquity. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That means it's currently at work. And only those who now let it will let until it be taken out of the way. The ultimate of the mystery of iniquity is to take you and I out of the right path. Take us out of the way of life. So we can become helpless. That's why we must see it as warfare. It's a battle against every foul spirit whose mission is to defy us, thereby disqualifying us for the best that God has in stock for us. But the good news is redemption has loaded us with adequate potentials to live a holy life. Adequate potentials to be as perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And all we need to do is to take responsibility by engaging relevant spiritual forces that will keep us on top of this foul spirit. We've been trying to look at those foul spirits in our midweek services. And what it takes to deal with them. My prayer today is that no one here will miss his own place in God's glorious agenda for the year 2016. And much more importantly, no one shall miss his place in eternity with Christ. You believe that? Let me hear your loudness. Amen.
we discover that temptation is the trap of the enemy in making a plea of God's people. Watch and pray, Jesus said to Peter, that thou fall not into temptation. Matthew 26, verse 41. But Jesus speaking to him says, Simon, Satan desires to have you. Luke 22 and verse 31. He wants to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that thy faith faileth not. So behind that seemingly ordinary event is Satan in person. His mission is to get Peter out of the way. Rob him of his glorious destiny in Christ. So it wasn't Peter. It wasn't a little girl. It wasn't the circumstances. It was Satan. Jesus says, Satan is haunting for you. He wants to sift you like wheat, blow you out, blow you off your feet. But I pray for you that I fail, fail it not. So it was not that little girl. It was Satan at work behind that little girl to bring Peter down. Every force ordained by the enemy to bring you down shall fail today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So behind that event is Satan. Now everybody's bothered. Why should Judas sell his master? No. Satan entered into Judas and he lost control. Satan entered into Judas and he lost control. So there are forces behind the scene put in place to dislodge us from the faith. But today as we explore the provisions made, we're working on top of them in the name of Jesus Christ. How do I overcome temptations? First, we want to understand that Satan is the tempter, not God. Satan is the tempter, not God. The temptation of Peter came through the operation of Satan direct. The Bible says, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God tempts no man with evil. God tempts no man with evil. The devil is the master tempter. God is our great deliverer. We mustn't miss that. Let no one say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. Because God tempts no man with evil. But everyone is tempted when he's drawn of his own lust. James 1.6 And when lust conceives, it brings forth sin. And when sin conceives, when sin is finished, it brings forth death. James 1, 15. Let's start from 14. Let no one say, but every man is tempted. Verse 13. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God tempts no man with evil. God tempts no man with evil. So let's identify the tempter himself. His name is Satan. And in the name of Jesus this morning, by the power of the blood, we overcome him. Amen. Somebody believe that? Let me hear you loud and say But everyone is tempted when he's drawn of a way of his own laws and entice. So he walks through that medium. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Today, the root of sin shall be caused in everyone's life. To overcome temptation one, we must continue to crave for 
a fresh baptism of the spirit of obedience. In Ezekiel 36 and verse 27, the Bible said, And I will put my spirit within you, and that will cause you to walk in my status. You shall keep my judgment and do them. I call that the spirit of obedience that empowers us to walk in obedience to every demand and instruction of scriptures. I will put my spirit within you. That means you are helpless without that spirit. I'm helpless without that spirit. There must be a genuine crave, a genuine task, a genuine panting for the spirit of obedience. And that will cause us to walk in his ways. We shall keep his judgment and do them. We will be able it will, to empower us to keep his judgment and do them. Hallelujah. Number two. We must put on the armor of light. Romans 13, 12. We must put on. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We must continue to pray for revelation because the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. Walking in revelation empowers us to live a sanctified life. Walking in the revelation by revelation of the world empowers us to live a sanctified life. That's very important. For the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Walking in the light empowers us to dominate darkness. Every sin is a walk of darkness. So when we walk in the light, we dominate them without sweat. Therefore, beginning from now and all through 2016, God will make each one's life a surprise to himself. The things you used to struggle with, you'll be living on top of them. The sins that easily beset you, you will uproot them. They shall be clearly uprooted in your life by the power of light. And the light shines in darkness and darkness can't stop it. And darkness can't stop it. And that's where you are going. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. How to overcome temptation. We must engage in continuous spiritual exercises. Continuous spiritual exercises. For bodily exercise profits nothing. But exercising oneself unto godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. We must keep on exercising ourselves unto godliness. When confronted, you begin to react spiritually. No, no, not again. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood, I have victory. In the name of Jesus, you pray in tongues to build up yourself upon your most holy faith. You are exercising yourself unto godliness. You are not waiting there to be overrun by evil. You are building bulwarks against every tendency of evil in your life. Every tendency of evil in your life. Exercising yourself vigorously unto godliness. Paul the Apostle said in Acts chapter 24 verse 16, he said, We are in exercise, he are in to exercise myself to have always a conscience that is void of offense both towards God and towards man. I exercise myself to always have a conscience that is void of offense. No, 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 that must not be, I must not be there. No, no, that must not be mentioned with me. No, I exercise myself. You don't excel in anything you don't exercise yourself in. It takes exercise to excel in sports. It takes exercise to excel in sports. 
And sanctification is a race. Say with me, sanctification is a race. Now, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, Wherefore, saying that we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that doth beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So it's a race. It's a race. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, who is the finisher, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. And you see him, he said, down and write majesty on high. He said, consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. Then verse 4, he said, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So it's a race. We have a race of sanctification set before us. And it takes rigorous exercises to excel in any race. It takes rigorous exercise to excel in any race. So we must engage in continuous spiritual exercises unto godliness. We shouldn't sit and wait for it. We must stand up to it. Stand up against it. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. So we can be qualified to win the race. Number four, to overcome temptations, we must keep a right company. Be not deceived. No matter how determined you are, evil communication will corrupt good manners. No matter how determined you are, there are relationships, if you don't break them, they will break you. Be not deceived. First Corinthians 15 verse 33. Evil communication corrupt good manners. No matter how anointed, evil communication corrupts good manners. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Amnon came from a royal family. He came from the conqueror's family, the tribe of Egypt, of Judah. But the Bible says, Amnon, the son of David, had a friend called Jonadab, a son of Belial. Second Samuel chapter 13 and verse 1. And that led him to his grave. He had a subtle man for a friend, and he subtly organized his death. And Amnon was gone. Jonadab was still on the street looking for who else to capture. Evil communication corrupts good manners. I'd like us to also know that one of the strategies of the enemy is to devalue our weapons of war. And if we let him do it, then we lose the ground to him without any resistance. For though we walk in the flesh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, we do not war after the flesh. But the weapons of our welfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They look so ordinary, they look so simple, but there's so much might in our spiritual weapons that we must not allow any devil to devalue these weapons in our hands. They are mighty through God to the building of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ that when our obedience is fulfilled, we'll avenge all disobedience. That's how powerful the weapons of our warfare are. They look so ordinary, but they're enormous. For instance, Shedan, Meshach, and Abednego walk through the fiery furnace with the mercy of faith. With what? God delivered them because they trusted in their God. I mean, how, how? You walk through the fiery furnace and come out to tell the story? No. That's how powerful the weapons of our warfare are. Remember what the Bible says, whatever is born of God overcomes whatever challenges are in the world, spiritual or physical. 
and through the weapon of faith through the weapon of faith look so ordinary through the weapon of faith building this tabernacle looks like a tall order within the period that was supposed to be built and without a budget for it faith built it the best of your anticipation in life can be built by faith just operating in line with the word believing and then you find the barriers give way in the name of Jesus Christ now so since we understand that sin or iniquity is a mystery it will take a higher mystery to subdue it that's why the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness first Timothy 3 16 great is the mystery without controversy great is the mystery of godliness great great is the mystery of godliness now this morning we'll be looking at a few of the mysteries of the kingdom as delivered to us which we have a response to engage if we must live a triumphant life among these include the mystery of the holy communion which is what we are centering on today what is in it that guarantees my sanctification what is in the holy communion that guarantees my sanctification the next is perhaps the mystery of the blood is the mystery of the blood of sprinkling which separates us unto God which stops the destroyer from assessing our life. And then the next mystery that we have been celebrating in testimonies here is the mystery of feet worship. Because there is cleansing power in the mystery of feet worship. He said, where you are washed, you are clean every week. Spirit, soul, and body. Every Part of your life is covered. There is cleansing power in feet washing. And then, of course, the mystery of the anointing oil, which we are used to. All of these mysteries, among other things, empower us to live a sanctified life because. They are there to empower our conquest of evil. Every evil that is ugly head against anyone's life here must be subdued today. Yeah. Now let's go straight to our concern for today. What is in the communion that empowers us to live a sanctified life? When we partake of the flesh and the blood of Jesus, we are empowered to live like him. John 5, I mean John 6, 57. We are empowered to live like him. As the living father has sent me, Jesus said, and I live by the father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Or call it, live like me. How many want to live like Jesus? As you partake of this communion today, be empowered to live like Jesus. Be empowered to live like Jesus. Be empowered to live like Jesus. Now, when they see you and me, we will tell them, if you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. That shall be our testimony all through 2016. Anyone who has seen you are saying the purity, the dignity, the sanctification of Christ in your life and my life. When we partake of the Holy Communion, we are spiritually being transfused with eternal life. Eternal life is being injected into us. Our eternal life is being renewed John 6 54 and 55 
He said, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him up, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. There is eternal life virtue in the communion. Remember the Bible said the witches of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So what the communion does is to destroy the root of sin, thereby giving eternal life the right of way in our life. So as we partake of the communion today, let's expect the root of sin to be rooted out of our life. So eternal life can have, eternal life can have full expression. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody blessed? When we are partake of the communion, we are delivered from death. And empowered, that is, empowered to dominate sin because the wages of sin is death. John 6 and 58. The Bible, Jesus speaking, said, This is that bread which came down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof. Not as a father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, what that says is this that this one is your insurance against the death that sin brings about. So, as we partake of this communion today, Let's see the root of sin dry up in our system. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The blood that we partake of in the communion is the blood of the everlasting covenant <coughs> which purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, the Bible was talking about now the God of peace who has brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Now, the blood of the everlasting covenant empowers us to do what is well pleasing to God. He walks in us to do it. Therefore, as we partake of the blood today, may everyone's conscience be purged of every evil work to serve the living God. So let's open up to the purging ministry of the blood. Whatever displeases God in my being, as I partake of the blood in this communion, I am free from it forever. We must come with such understanding. He said, How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It is in the communion we partake of the blood. And the blood we partake of is the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood that continues to deliver its content unabated forever. Glory to God. So as you partake of this blood today, every trap of sin is cursed forever. Amen. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. In summary, the Holy Communion sanctifies our three realms of Existence. He delivers our body from the plagues of sickness and disease. We saw that several in the scriptures. As they dropped the meal into the pot, the poison was neutralized. So, as we partake of this communion today, every poisoning in your system shall be neutralized. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. 
they were feeding on manna, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. As you partake of this communion today, every feebleness, every weakness, every torture, every torment in your body is cleared off forever. The communion also imparts our soul, that is our mind, our will, our intellect, with supernatural insight. Jesus gave them the bread, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Luke 24, verse 30 and 31. And then, of course, the communion sanctifies our spirit man, purges our conscience from every dead work to serve the living God. So the communion makes us total and complete in Christ. Therefore, today, whatever is blocking your access to the light of scriptures as you partake of the communion they give way to you yeah. whatever is afflicting your spirit man every foul spirit that is trying to hold you captive against the will of God because you overcame him by the blood of the lamb as you partake of the blood today they are conquered in Jesus name we close with this very quickly. What is in sanctification for me? What is in aid for me? Because it's when you know what you stand to benefit that motivates your investment in ensuring that you don't give room to defilement. What is in sanctification? Say with me, divine health. Say it loud, divine health. The man that was at the pool of Bethesda who was healed by Christ, Jesus met him in John chapter 5 verse 14 and said, go and say no more lest a worse than this, a worse thing come unto thee. Go and say, you are made whole, but say no more lest a worse than this come unto you. Sanctification guarantees sustenance of divine health. In Mark chapter 2, the man that was healed, the paralytic man that was healed by Christ, in verse 12, I mean verse 5, Jesus said to him, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. He said, what is he talking about? Now, what Christ is saying is that sin tied that man on that bed. Whatever sin it was, we didn't know. Verse 5. He said to his son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus never spoke any careless word. But how did that come in? He knew all things and he knew that that man got to where he was by saying. So sanctification guarantees sustenance of divine hair. Come and say, I'll receive it. I'll receive. Say louder yet, I'll receive it. I'll receive. The loudest you can, I'll receive it. Please give me that diary. I need to pick something in there. There was this lady that was an harlot, a prostitute. Give me those papers, please. And was plagued, as expected, with quite a number of challenges. I joined this commission 14th June 2015 in the midst of the year season. Before I was invited to church, I was into prostitution, smoking and drinking. My life had no meaning and purpose. All I knew was how I could sleep with men and be paid for my services. But after going through the Believers Foundation class, water baptism and Wobby, my life changed dramatically. Today I have testimonies. I have lost desire for sex. No more prostitution. My menstrual cycle that stopped flowing for over a year now started flowing normally again last week. I used to experience severe pains in my chest and as, as a result of smoking, but the pain has disappeared now. Jesus has rebranded me and my language changed completely to go beyond the glory. Now, that is the effect of sanctification. That's from one UK Sarah. You have it. Everything that torments any one of us here, the end has come finally. Yeah. Number two, what is in sanctification for me? 
Say with me, divine favor. Sanctification guarantees the flow of divine favor. Thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor shalt thou compass him about as with a shield. In First John chapter 3, verse 7, be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. It's not about explanation, it's about manifestation. Righteousness not manifested is fake righteousness. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Joseph the righteous was Joseph the favored. Favored as a slave, favored as a prisoner. No matter where you put the righteous, favor will locate him. No matter where you put the righteous, favor will trail him. It's like hands and gloves. The righteous never runs out of favor. Therefore, throughout the year 2016, you will never lack favor. Genesis chapter 39, verse 5. Joseph found grace. He found favor in the sight of his master. Verse 20, 21. He found favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And Joseph said, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against you? Righteousness guarantees the flow of favor. And favor is what defines the limits of everyone's future. No life, no future shall be greater than the favor available to her. Therefore, you want to scale new heights, then go for sanctification. You will find favor. As you find favor, you become a higher flyer. Now, Daniel purpose in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. Verse 18. He said, and Daniel purpose in his heart that he will not defy himself with the portion of the king's food. And in verse 9, now the Lord has brought Daniel into favor. Quickly, quickly, when you sign up for righteousness, favor flows in your direction. That shall be your experience all through the year 2016 as you prepare to lay a sure foundation in sanctification. We stop at number three. Sanctification guarantees access to divine secrets. Come and say, access to divine secrets. And it is divine secrets that make stars in the kingdom. It is divine secret that makes stars in the kingdom. Access, sanctification guarantees access to divine secrets. Joseph the righteous, the Bible says, in as much as God has shown you all this, say with me, divine secret. That Genesis 41 and verse 38. Access to divine secret will make a star of any domain. Access to divine secret. Now, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Who was Daniel? They couldn't find anything wrong with Daniel except against the law of his God. Chapter 2, verse 9, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Sanctification guarantees access to divine secrets. Joe was a man that feared God and eschewed evil, a perfect man. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. And Job said, I was simply trading divine secret as I was in the days of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. What made Job a star businessman was access to divine secret. And what gave him access to divine secret is a consecrated lie. Psalm 25 verse 14, the Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secret of God is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Well, the good news is this. All of these virtues and benefits will be manifested in your life unabated all through the year 2016. As we commit ourselves to the demand for sanctification, we commit ourselves to the demands for sanctification. We'll be flowing in divine secret. 
and the bicycle will keep on moving us from one level of glory to another. Somebody blessed? Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Quickly this morning, that lady first gave her life to Christ and then a change of story began. No one can live a sanctified life until he is first saved. So, if you are not saved, you are not born again yet, you want to give your life to Christ this morning, please, I'd like to pray with you. So much I don't know what it means to be saved, that means you are not. If you are, you will know. It's not going to church. It's not being involved in activities. It's meeting with Christ, embracing Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And the evidence is, if anyone be in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed, and we behold all things have become new. If there is nothing new around your life, you are just engaging in religious activity, you need to be saved. Jesus said, you must be born again. Wherever you may be this morning in this service, you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be born again, you want to become a child of God, you want to start on the race of sanctification, so you can enjoy the blessedness of glorification, Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. You want to say yes to Jesus this morning? You want to say, Jesus, save me this morning? Please stand. Stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you in a moment. I'll be praying for you right there where you are. Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Everyone standing, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. And I'll be praying with you right there. Or that spot, some church officials are waiting. There are also people here this morning that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. If you are there, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, you want to reconnect back to God, please stand to your feet. Maybe you are once saved at a point, or you need to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. I pray for you right now at the same time. Everyone that wants to rededicate his life to Christ, please stand. Please stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. And as you start, please join the others right now. Uh, join the officials who are waiting for you to assist you in filling out your card in a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For everyone standing, please bow your heads right now. You can complete your forms later on. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer of faith after me. Everyone, say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Amen. Praise God. Keep your hands up. Father, I pray over these souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. There is no more going back for you. You have found light today. You won't walk back into darkness. You have found life. You won't walk back into death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, give the Lord a big hand. Please complete your forms right there. Complete those forms right there. And pass them on to the church officials that are standing with you. So we can be part of your joy. And be part of your growth in the faith. Don't miss that for anything. Please make sure officials you collect all those forms from them. Shall we all rise to our faith? Let the stewards come over to the table of the Lord right now. Lift up your two hands. Whatever you desire from the Lord's table today, as expanded by the word, lay hold on it. Reach out to heaven. Lay hold on it. I'm partaking of this communion today to live like you, Jesus. To live like you, Jesus. 
to live like you, Jesus. To live like you, Jesus. The root of sin is destroyed in my life by the power of your blood today. I'm walking in victory. My physical health is restored. My mental health is restored. My spiritual health is restored. I'm empowered to live like Christ from today. The blood of the everlasting covenant is purging my conscience from every dead walk to serve the living God. I partake of this mission today to gain mastery over the root of sin in my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, honor your word today and let everyone's desire be delivered in Jesus' precious name. Please get seated while the choir ministers to the Lord and we serve this table. Power, 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 power
In the precious blood of the Lamb There is power There is power Power Power, power. For the walking for right In the blood of the Lamb The Lamb of God that was slain for us There is power Power For the walking for In the precious blood of Encounter is given you from the communion table today. Give him thanks. Your conscience, my conscience, is poured from every dead work to serve the living God. Give him thanks and praise. Celebrate him. Magnify him. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Please know that. Every prescription of scriptures is for our application as often as they are required. When your conscience begins to drift, you take the communion to bring it back to shape. I said, conscience be purged.
by the blood of your everlasting covenant as I partake of this communion right now and get back on your feet doing only what is well pleasing to God in the name of Jesus Christ so as often as he takes it so there is no limit you don't wait for church service for that it is your covenant medication against every form of desecration and defilement can I hear your amen yeah. the same way you take it for your healing the healing of your body take it for the health of your spirit man can I hear your amen yeah. can I hear your amen yeah. therefore I'm asking you to, that, to partake of the communion every evening before you go to bed all through the remaining days of this year every night you are partaking of the communion every night and you are partake, take, taking of that for the healing health and wholeness of your spirit man can I hear your amen You'll be surprised at yourself as every taste for sin will be destroyed yeah. every flare for sin will be destroyed yeah. and your life will be released to move from glory to glory yeah. in the name of jesus christ he said for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of god so you can't see his glory until sin gives way this coming year you'll be flowing from one realm of glory to another yeah. Now, don't forget, we are in here for a celebration of the gift of Christ on Friday. And we're having two services because we want you to have enough room to eat and drink and drink and eat all the day on Friday after the service. Praise God. And then on Sunday, we are here for another round of celebration, our global end of year thanksgiving service so come prepared before the lord to be part of that in jesus name and that service will be four services just like today praise the lord together let's share the goodness of the lord in fellowship surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall be the presence of the lord forever and ever amen peace from glory to glory. Come and say it now like someone who has a new name. From glory to glory. And from glory to glory. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. We get ready for the second service. Your dwelling place, I will build your throne in my heart. Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit, come and take your place in my life. I will make
has the final say. Hallelujah. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. In your life, in your health, who has the final say? Jehovah has Hallelujah. the final say. It doesn't matter what the devil has shown you, my Jesus has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. I say, who has the final say? we take our seat in his presence in this special communion service we call ourselves to worship reading responsively the book of Psalms chapter number 125 we're reading the entire chapter I read verse number one and then we alternate till the end they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. 
verse 2. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity. Verse 4. Verse 5 together. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Let's take number four together. One, two, three, go. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and do that our pride in their heart. In this service, the Lord will do you good. You are welcome. From glory to glory, please listen to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this service. The prophetic focus for the month is only the sanctified are ordained to be glorified. Number one, today is our special communion service. We should all get set for sanctification of our spirit, soul, and body through the cleansing power in His Word and the mystery of the communion table. Number two, praise the Lord. Christmas service holds on Friday, 25th December, 2015. There shall be only two services. The first service, 7 to 9 a.m. And the second service, 9.15 to 11.15 a.m. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Remember, it holds in over 600 locations across Lagos or an environs. Look out for the nearest location around you and engage for your spiritual upliftment. There shall be no covenant hour of prayer on Friday because of the Christmas service. Number four, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos and Ota. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. The time, 6 p.m. Number five, good news. 20 intending couples wear this coming weekend. Saturday, 26 December. We are all admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time is 11 a.m. Number six, Believers Foundation class and the Winners Satellite Fellowship shall not hold this coming Monday and Saturday respectively in view of the massive movement of people this season, including teachers and officials who are to minister at the foundation class and at the WSF meetings. Number seven, all Shiloh 2015 messages are available on MP3 and DVD format. Please pick your copies from the Dominion bookstores around the tabernacle and also from the ushers. Number eight, praise the Lord. Church calendar for 2016 is out. Members can pick their copies from the ushers at the entrances and in the bookstores. Copies of From Glory to Glory 2016 car and door stickers are also available. Number nine, praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our end of year special Thanksgiving service, both as a church and as individual members. 2015 has been our most loaded year with all of God's goodness, mercy, and grace in dimensions never known before. Therefore, we hold God thanks. It shall be a time of celebration of God's faithfulness among His people, which shall result in preservation and multiplication of our blessings. Everyone shall come expectant for an encounter of a lifetime. We shall be holding only four services. Jesus is Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. From glory to glory, in this service it is testimony time. Let uh, Favor E.J. come to the altar to share his testimony. And as he's coming, let's listen to the following documented testimonies. 
two year masturbation destroyed. I started masturbating in the year 2013 via the influence of pornographic images and videos, which was unstoppable. I had rededicated my life to Christ severally and even made vows to God that he should struck me with leprosy. Yet, masturbation continued. This year, 2015, in the month of September, while partaking of the communion, in a communion service, I heard the words of Papa in my inward man. What you don't want, you don't watch. What you don't resist has the right to remain. I got angry in my spirit and declared violently that my father has said, whatever cannot be found in Jesus shall not be found in me anymore. Does Jesus masturbate? No. I destroy every source of masturbation in my life in Jesus' name. I am sure the devil had me rebuke him because ever since then, masturbation stopped. I give God all the glory. The testifier is Adiago Emmanuel. Come up and share your testimony, your name, and in one minute what the Lord has done. From glory to glory. My name is Sister Favor AJ. I have come to give God all the glory. Um, two years back, I've had to do um, five blood transfusions because the doctor diagnosed me with fibroid. But just before Shiloh, I prayed and the Lord led me to join the communion. I joined communion before Shiloh last year. And in January, I started having the symptoms again. I went to the doctor and he said I, I needed to come for another blood tr transfusion immediately. But I said, no, I will not do that. I will not live on blood transfusions. So I kid in and I started taking communion daily. He told me to take um, blood capsules that I could have brain seizure, I could have stroke and all manner of terrible verdicts. But I said, the God of this commission I'm serving will not put me to shame. From January to date, I have not had to take any blood transfusion. I've been on communion. I'm alive. I'm well. I've not had any brain seizure or damage, no stroke. I'm, I'm, I'm strong. Therefore, the prophetic verdict for this year, that I will not need any medication to stay alive. And all the medical, negative medical verdicts, God has turned to testimonies. Glory be to God. The healing shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. Let's listen to this uh, documented testimony. I am rescued and totally restored. I have come to return all the glory to God. One faithful morning in September, I was at my usual spot to smoke my depression away as I was an ayek, that is called, courtis, and was rusticated from place to place to walk due to fraud. I was engaged in my life and was in shambles. My life was in shambles. I decided to come for the last Sunday of September and I couldn't resist but to keep attending. The following Sunday I gave my life to Christ. I engaged in administering the Holy Communion and I noticed the urge to drink and smoke stopped. I wasn't comfortable with my friends anymore and withdrew gradually from them. My thought pattern changed and my life st started having meaning again. I also engaged fully with every instruction given by Papa. I went out for soul winning and ensured I followed up on my contacts. My health became fully restored. My infected finger started healing on its own. I discovered my swollen testes had disappeared and gone back to normal. As I was diagnosed of an infection and have used many drugs and was meant to go for an operation. I don't look older than my age anymore. I am amazed at what my life has become in two months. I am rescued from destruction and my life now has a meaning. Even my mom and neighbors are amazed at me. I thank the God of this commission and the testifier is Felis You. Let's give Jesus a big hand for these testimonies. From glory to glory. In this second service, it is offering time.
can you make that bold declaration? It's my blessing time. So please let's quickly package our worship offering, beginning with our tithes, which is 10 percent of the blessings of the Lord upon our life, your worship seed for this service, and any other seed that you have brought before the God of heaven to honor him with. And I'd like you to please do that with understanding. Remember the word of the Lord in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and verse 25. He said, there is he that scattered it, yet increased it. There is that we told it more than is meat and tended to poverty. The Lord God of heaven will change your story today. Let's quickly rise on our feet with those worship seed in our hand, your tithes, your offering, and any other seed you brought to the Lord. And please speak a word of love unto our Father in heaven. The God of increase who is going to change somebody's level. Express your appreciation to him. Thank him for the privilege to be with him today and for putting a seed in your hand. Give him thanks and celebrate him for his faithfulness in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You know, as you sow this seed this morning, the Lord God of heaven will change your story. He said, the liberal soul shall be made fat. The God of heaven will make you financially fat. In Jesus' precious name. Let's take our seat, sow our seed, and acquire ministers. The reign of righteousness, the reign of holiness, the reign of prosperity from the Lord Most High. It will flush out iniquity and break up every yoke, release heavenly blessings from the Lord. It's the reign of righteousness. Somebody believe it this morning. From the Lord, it's a flush out, it's a flush out every liquidity. Break up every year, release heavenly blessings to us today. From the Lord, it's the reign of righteousness, reign of holiness, reign of prosperity. From the Lord, it's a flush, it's a flush, it's a flush out. Break up every yard. Release heavenly blessings to us today. From the Lord, most high. There is a heavy the poor from the throne of God on high. The sky is heavy. There is a mighty and pouring of heavenly blessings. It's a rain of power. It's a rain of earth. It's a rain of prosperity from the Lord. I said there is a heavy the fall from the throne of God on high. The sky is so heavy. There is a mighty and pouring of heavenly blessing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The rain of power. Holy Ghost, rain of heaven. A rain of prosperity from the Lord is a rain of righteousness. Rain of holiness. Rain of power. Rain of prosperity from the Lord. It's a flush, it's a flush, it's a flush of every. Break every yoke of sin. Every addiction of power of the enemy. It's a rain of righteousness, rain of holiness, rain of power, rain of prosperity from the Lord. It's a flush, it's a flush, it's a flush out. Break every yard, release heaven and blesses, release heaven and blesses. I said, you're so heavy, don't pour. From the 
children of God on high. I can see the sky is so heavy. There is a mighty pouring of heavenly blessing. Oh, 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 oh. A rain of power. I said rain of power. A rain of prosperity from the Lord. It's a rain of righteousness. For flush, for flush, break every yoke of sin, every yoke of the enemy. Raise our bowl of blessing from the Lord. Oh, what manner of man is our God that He will bless His people from around the land? So rain at a time. I leave my cup, Lord. Feel the clock to overflow. I said, Oh, what manner of man is our God that he will bless his people, the former and the last, to reign at a time. Oh, Lord, I leave my cup, Lord. Jesus, feel the clock to overflow. With the rain of anointing, the rain of the rain of liberty, the rain of liberty, highest the rain of prosperity from the Lord. I should tell me what we really do is to flush out, is to break up every yoke, raise heavenly blessings to us today. Hallelujah. I said, Thank the Lord. Soak the Lord. Thank the Lord. Jesus brought me love to the Lord. The rain, the rain, the rain. The rain. The rain. I leave my cup of Jesus. Give me to overflow. Jehovah back me, Lord. Soak me, Lord. I say, back me, Lord, back me, Lord, back me, Lord. With the rain of holiness. I say, with the rain of righteousness. With the power of nation power, the place and power in the blood, the place and power in the blood, Jesus and the Son of Christ. Lift your hand to heaven, everybody, and let's begin to appreciate God and give him thanks and praise for this awesome privilege to be in his presence on the second to the last Sunday of this great year of heaven on earth. And in this new season that God has brought us into from glory to glory, appreciate him and give him thanks. Celebrate the faithfulness of God. It is of his mercy that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Appreciate him and celebrate him. Give him the praise, the glory, the honor and adoration. Father, we give you praise. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. Now begin to ask him for an encounter with his word this morning. An encounter that will change your life. An encounter that will enhance your dimension of glorification. An, an encounter that will enhance your sanctification. An encounter that will cleanse you from all uncleanliness. Lord, I reposition myself today for an encounter in your presence this morning. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning for the privilege we have to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because you have brought us indeed to this second to the last Sunday of this, this great year, and we give you the praise and glory. Let this day be a day of visitation and a day of change of story for every individual. 
you have called it a special communion service lord let the communion of this day bring each one to a special dimension of sanctification we give you the praise and the glory in jesus precious name and somebody believe god say a loud amen. amen give jesus a big hand and you may please take your seat in the presence of the lord hallelujah it is my privilege to share god's word with us this morning a privilege received from god through his servant for which i am forever eternally grateful praise the lord i said praise the lord we began a series of teachings the first sunday of this month sanctification covenant gateway to glorification and we're looking at part two here this morning and i pray that god will open our eyes to his word and enhance our sanctification in the precious name of jesus christ we have established from the book of first corinthians 15 and verse 41 first corinthians 15 verse 41 the bible says that there is one glory of the sun there is another glory of the moon he said and there is a glory of stars but one star differed from another star in glory and we have discovered from that scripture that the glory of god that work in the life of any individual is in degrees not all glory is the same glory not all glory is the same dimension in second corinthians 4 verse, 4 verse 17 the bible tells us there he said for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory so glory can exceed glory there are dimensions in the demonstration or the reflection of the glory of God upon the life of an individual. And the good news is that God's intention is for every child of God to experience increasing dimensions of glory. That is why I said in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, he said, We all with open face beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 says that the path of the just is as the shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. I see that becoming your own experience. All through the year 2016, you shall be going from glory to glory. Before you recover from one glory, you'll be entering another glory. Somebody believe me, say it louder, amen. But we have discovered that whatever man has as a desire, God has a demand. And the demand for man's desire for the glory of God is the demand of sanctification. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21, which is our anchor for the month, he said, the foundation of God standeth sure. In other words, if you don't have this part, you have not started with God yet. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. That are his. Please hear this. There are many people that may call God their God, but until God calls you his child, your stand with him is not sure. He said, the Lord knoweth those that are his. And who are they? Let everyone that nameth the name of God depart from iniquity. He said, for in a great house there are many vessels, not only of gold and of silver. He said, but there are also of wood and of earth. He said, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But if a man will purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work according to this scripture whether you are gold whether you are silver whether you are wood or you are earth is a product of your decision and your manifestation it is not god's fault god does not determine that one person will be gold and another person will be wood no each one's sanctification determines the dimension of the reflection of glory that they have. You and I will both agree that whenever you see gold, it reflects light. Is that true? When you see silver, it reflects light. But when you see earth, it does not reflect light. When you see wood, it does not reflect light. Because the only things that reflect light are the things that are most purified and most sanctified. 
And the light represents the glory of God. It means that if you are sanctified, you have the capacity to reflect God's glory. I pray for somebody here today that God will give you grace to reflect his glory in this season. Somebody believe me, say it louder, amen. amen. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 and 2, he said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He said, For darkness will cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. I'd like us to understand this morning that as we are entering into this new season of 2016, our year from glory to glory, God has packaged for his people to emerge as giants as we heard at Shiloh. But it will be a season of darkness and gloominess for the world. And that is why our stand with God must be definitely defined by sanctification. And this month becomes so critical. In preparing each one of us for the glory that lies ahead. No one here will miss their own glory. If you are the one I'm talking about, say it loud, amen. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible makes us to understand. He said there, he said, for be holy, for I am holy. So every redeemed child of God has the capacity to live a holy life. Every redeemed child of God has the capacity to live a holy life. And it is that demonstration of practical holiness that permits you to experience the reflection of the glory of God. Hear what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. It said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Even if it is the year of glory, like the one we are entering into. He said, without holiness, no man, no matter his name, no man, no matter his title, no man, no matter his position, shall see the Lord. How many of us would like to see God in this new season? Well, God has said that the requirement for experiencing him in this season is the requirement of holiness. That is why sanctification which is the process of purging and cleansing, is critical for anyone to experience the glory of God. Somebody here will see the glory of God. Amen. If you are the one, say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you are the one, say louder, amen. amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, Jesus said there, he said, be ye perfect, because your heavenly father is perfect. So there is the capacity or the potential for holiness, there is the capacity or the potential for perfection within every redeemed child of God. That is why we must begin to press. According to Philippians 3.14, he said, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. So we must begin to press into greater dimensions of sanctification in order to procure greater dimensions of the glory of God. I see each one here today experiencing a new dimension of God's glory like never before. If you believe me, say a loud amen. amen. But you and I both know that on every journey towards God's promise to man, there is the resistance of the enemy. On every journey. God has given us the capacity for holiness, but there is a resistance against it. And this is so important that we understand. There is a resistance. He said, for a great door and effectual is open, but there are many adversaries. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. So there is a need for us to know how to overcome in the war against temptation. I'd like us to understand that every man sins as a product of temptation. It is temptation before fall. So if you know how to beat temptation, you know how to defeat sin. That is why understanding what God has packaged for us in this month is so critical. The Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. So it is the knowledge of the truth that empowers us for dominion. Over the tricks and the wiles of the devil. So how do we overcome temptation? Let's take a few steps here from scriptures as we proceed this morning. 
Number one is we must engage in continuous spiritual exercises. For you to defeat temptation or for you to overcome temptation, there is the need for continuous engagement in spiritual exercises. I've heard God's servant, our father, say so many times upon this exalted altar that spiritual vacuum is a risk. Particularly in this kind of season where we are. One of the temptations of the devil is to tell you where you have tried already. Fifty weeks of the year have come and gone. Have you not tried yet? You have fasted, you have prayed. Just take time and relax. Every laxity is an opportunity for the devil to take advantage of destiny. Every spiritual laxity. That is why there is a requirement for consistent exercise. If you are going to find yourself worthy of winning the war against temptation. In Acts chapter 24 and verse 16, the Bible tells us there, he said, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards men. When the Bible here speaks about offense, it talks, it means actually violation. A conscience that is not in violation of God or men. A conscience that is not sinning against God or men. But for me to have this, he said, I must exercise myself. Let's understand this very importantly this morning. That it is exercise that gives you the capacity to win in the race of destiny for sanctification. God's servant showing us this morning in the first service, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 down to verse 4. He showed us clearly that the race, I mean, the journey for sanctification is a spiritual race. He says, see therefore, as we are compassed around with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he said, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He said, now he's seated down at the right hand of the throne of God. He said, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners, so that you are not wearied or faint in your mind. He said, because you have not, you have not yet resisted unto blood in striving against sin. So the picture of that race is a picture of sanctification. The picture of that race in that scripture is a picture of sanctification. And every runner must keep fit to win on the race day. It takes therefore spiritual exercise to maintain spiritual fitness and stand against the wiles of the enemy in the day of temptation. If you understand that, say a loud amen. amen. I said, if you understand that, say a loud amen. amen. If you understand that, say a loud amen. amen. This is so important because what you are not prepared for, you cannot conquer. You are not permitted to conquer in the race of life. If you are going to win in this race, Against all the holes of sin. What you are not prepared for, you cannot conquer. Until your spirit man is added, then you must recognize the necessity of maintaining a life of sanctification. And that requires spiritual exercise. The Bible makes us to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning from verse 24. The Bible tells us there, He said, Know you not that all that run, they run but one up the price. He says, so run so that you may obtain. He said, and every man that strives for mastery, he said, is temperate in all things. Corruptible. Is temperate. He measures himself in all things. He said, so I run not as uncertainly as uncertainly, so I fight also not as one that is. Now they do this to obtain a corruptible crown, but is beating the air. I, I, I keep my body under. I bring it into subjection. So there are exercises of the spirit that put your spirit over 
the body in terms of dominion. Please hear this and hear it very well. If your body is not under the dominion of the spirit, your body will misbehave. That is why there is a need for spiritual exercises. The exercise of prayer. The exercise of fasting. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You wake up in the morning and you feel any sensation around you. You blast in the Holy Ghost to clear off every hindrance. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? This is so important because our exercises of the spirit are the things that keep us fit in the war against sin. No one here will be a victim of sin in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I said no one here will be a victim of sin in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So we engage in continuous spiritual exercise. Continuous means without end. It means day in, day out. It means yesterday prayer is not enough for today. It means yesterday's Bible study is not enough for today. There are so many people who are living on, you know, stale manner. The Bible makes it clear. Manna is good only for one day. After that day, he said, throw it away and gather fresh manna. The word you received for yesterday is not enough for the temptation of the day. The Bible said enough or sufficient for each day is the evil thereof. So also sufficient for each day must be the exercise thereof. If you are going to win against evil, then you must also win in the battle of exercising spiritually to the place of dominion. No one here will be a victim. I said no one here will be a victim in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 31, Paul speaking there said, I die daily. I die daily. The mortifying of your flesh is a daily event. It's a daily event. Romans chapter 8 verse 13, he said, If ye through the spirit, spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. So you stand in prayer every day. Lord, today must be a day of dominion. This lying tongue must be silenced. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You overcome it before the devil shows up. You overcome it before the devil shows up. You load your spirit man. You clear your atmosphere before he shows up. And when you begin to do that, you find out that victory becomes your identity. That will be somebody's experience here. I said that to be somebody's experience here in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, you crave the baptism of the spirit of obedience. You do what? You crave the baptism of the spirit of obedience. The Bible makes us to understand in that book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. It said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the Bible tells us concerning Jesus in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, he said he was tempted at all points but yet without sin. Why was it so? In John chapter 8 verse 29, the Bible said concerning Jesus, he said, I do always those things that please him. In John chapter 5 verse 30, he said, I can of my own self do nothing. But as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. What made Jesus live a life that was without sin was that he had the capacity for, for perfect obedience to every instruction of God. And that requires the spirit of obedience. Remember the Bible said concerning Jesus that he had the spirit without measure. So he had obedience without limits. Even obedience to the death of the cross. Whatever would put him at variance with God, he was not willing to per permit it. Because of the empowerment of the Spirit of God. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27, God promised. And he said, he said, I will put my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my statutes. He said, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Because of this spirit. So the spirit of obedience empowers us to obey every injunction from God. Whatever you find in the scriptures, you don't try to manipulate it to fit your life. You actually change your life to fit it because of the endowment of the spirit of obedience. I love the testimony of Kenneth Copeland. He said that when he got saved, and I believe it was the working of the spirit of obedience, he made a vow to God. He said, Lord, I will not change your word to fit my life. I will change my life to fit your word. 
There are so many people who are busy trying to manipulate God's word to fit their life. They are trying to change what God says to fit their lifestyle. They say, well, you see, everything around, God must also understand the situation of things around. There is no way to progress without doing A, without doing B. Hear this. God's standard never changes. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? The standard of God never changes. Let me say this to us. It will help us. There is a difference between morality and spirituality. Morality is actually determined by popularity. That is whatever people decide is good. They determine that that is what is moral. That is why the things that were immoral 20 years ago are now normal today. Because morality is determined by the popular decisions of society. But spirituality has never changed. Why? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So God's standard will never change. Because God's word will never change. Hear this and hear it very well. No matter what your work colleague tells you. No matter what your business partners tell you. God's word will never change. It has been tried seven times in fire. God did not give it as a suggestion. He gave it as a commandment. And it is the spirit of obedience that empowers us to keep the commandment of God. Somebody understand that? Say loud, amen. So rather than saying, Lord, this is impossible. Say, Lord, empower me to keep this commandment. The Bible said there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh but after the spirit. He said for the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. If you are going to be free, it will take the spirit of God. He said for wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. For somebody here today, I see a fresh release of the spirit of obedience upon your life. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. In First Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, First Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible said, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. It is the sanctification of the Spirit that empowers us for obedience. And I see the Spirit of God today sanctifying somebody here afresh for greater dimension of obedience. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. For greater dimension of obedience. In the precious name of Jesus. When this spirit is at work, obedience becomes sweet. It is not a burden. You begin to enjoy obeying God. Every demand of God becomes the delight of your heart. He said, blessed is the man that fears the Lord. Who greatly delighted in his commandment. So there is a point where the, the commandment of God becomes your delight. Psalm 112 and verse 1. He greatly delighted in his commandment. That is what God has ordained for each one of us. And the spirit of obedience is what empowers us. Receive a fresh that spirit of obedience today. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. I said receive a fresh that spirit of obedience today. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Number three is keep the right company. If you are going to win the war against temptation, keep the right company. Let me say this, it will help us. Environment is critical to every individual's pursuit of sanctification. And I want to also emphasize this, that environment is a product of personal decision. God servant has said this many times, that friendship is not by force. Friendship is by choice. If the people who were your friends before you were born again are the same friends you have now, backsliding is your destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is automatic. Why? Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. In other words... If you are keeping evil association, you are deceiving yourself. If your best friend is a sinner, watch it. You are deceiving yourself. Please hear this and hear it very well. If everyone around you was a sinner and you were the only saint, have no friends. Let God be your friend. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let God be your friend. Friendship is not by force. Friendship is by choice. There are too many heavenly personalities to talk to if you have no earthly person to talk to. You have God the Father. You have God the Son. You have God the Holy Ghost. You have all the angels of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So stop making excuses for the associations that you have. Stop making excuses for the associations that you have. Stop making excuses. Everyone's journey to sanctification requires specific disconnections. Everyone's journey to sanctification requires specific disconnections. As important as destiny connections are, destiny disconnections are also important. If you don't disconnect from certain specific associations, they will carry your destiny in the wrong direction. God's servant told the story about two people who were traveling and they were at the airport. And both of them were having conversation. And one of them got carried away in the conversation. His flight was mentioned. And the other person was busy listening for his own flight. And then as soon as they mentioned his flight, he took off. He said, sorry, excuse me, I'm on my way. And he began to run towards his flight. And the other person who was discussing with him began to ask, okay, where is my flight? The flight he was to take has taken off while he was having conversation. You see, that's how many people's destiny flights are taken off while they are having evil association by reason of refusal to make specific disconnection. For somebody here today, I see God empowering you to make disconnections that will assist your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1, we meet one of the sons of David. His name was Amnon. Amnon was a child of destiny. The first son of David, one who was ordained, as it were, to be on the throne. A man of precious destiny. But he had a, an evil friend called Jonadab. Jonadab, instead of advising him when he had an evil motion, instead of telling him, my friend, wake up, your destiny is too precious to go in this direction. He advised him on how to commit sin. The evil of Jonadab was that when Amnon was killed, Jonadab was the one who announced it to his father. King, don't worry, there's no problem. All your sons are okay, it's only Amnon that died. The individual who he advised evilly. You see, we must come to understand that those who corrupt destiny celebrate destructions. If you allow people to corrupt your destiny, they are the same one to celebrate your destruction. That is why it is critical to make specific disconnections in order to preserve destiny. I pray for somebody here today that the grace to disconnect from every, every evil association be given to you in the name of Jesus. One of the one of the observations you will make from scriptures is that many destiny corruptors outlast the people they corrupt. Look at the man Jonadab. He still outlast. He saw the downfall of his friend to the end and announced it to the king while still standing in life. You must watch your destiny. Please hear this. Your destiny is your responsibility. And you protect your destiny by making connections and also making disconnections. In Proverbs 13, 20, He that walks with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. During my school years, I observed that after every examination, you will see those who fail associating together. If you have observed it very closely. At the end of every examination, people come out, they don't go back. They will not go to the hostel, they will not go home. They will stay by the door and begin to have conversation with other associated failures. Because whatever you walk with, you look like. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As it is for success, it is also for sanctification. If you walk with sinners, you look like sinners. Please let me say this to us, it will help you. If any individual looks at you and mistakes you for a sinner, check who is around you. If somebody looks at you in your office and asks you to give you bribe, check your friends. There is something wrong with your environment that is dictating that perception. 
Because you see, it is not everybody that they can give bribe to. We have heard God, some and our father say so many times, he said, what mouth can any devil use to ask me for bribe? You see, because the, his stance is clear and it shows also by those that are around him. But by the time in your office, your best friend is the most important bribe collector. Then you may not be very far from becoming the treasurer of bribe collection. But that will not be your own experience. I said that will not be your own experience. He said, come ye from among, among them and be ye separate. Second Corinthians chapter 6, beginning from verse 17. Come out from among them and be ye separate. I see God and gracing you for separation. Number five, number four, put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. Put on the armor of light. He said, the night is far spent. And the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Light talks about revelation. Walking in the light. Walking in the light. When you are committed to walking in the light. You will find that darkness cannot find its way around you. Because light and darkness cannot have fellowship together. The Bible says, what fellowship has light with darkness? There can be no association. Light and darkness are permanently separated. So if you are walking in the light, then you'll be empowered to dislodge darkness. I see somebody here today being empowered to dislodge darkness in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Remember that every force of defilement is a force of darkness. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, the, the rulers of the darkness, they rule in darkness. So, when you are walking in light, their power to rule you is dislodged. I see somebody here receiving grace to walk in the light in the name of Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. He said, in him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. From today, darkness will not be able to handle you. I said, from today, darkness will not be able to handle you. From today, darkness will not be able to handle you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it's important for us to recognize that among the definite weaponry for defeating the hold of darkness are actually the mysteries of the kingdom. And God's word reveals them to us. The mysteries of the kingdom are not for occasional partaking. No, they are weapons of warfare. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and verse 4, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. I want you to understand that the devil has sworn to make you fall. But God has empowered you by these mysteries to make you stand. For somebody here, you shall never fall. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible tells us about the mystery of iniquity. But the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, that great is the mystery of godliness. So the mysteries of God are greater than the devices of the enemy. That is why it's important that we recognize that every one of these mysteries are given to us by God to empower our dominion over the enemy. Some of these mysteries include the communion table, which is part of what we'll be receiving today. We also have the mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Remember, he said in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24, he said in Zion there is the sprinkling of the blood. It takes place permanently in Zion. And why is that so? They overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The man of sin can be cheaply defeated by the blood. We have also the mystery of feet washing. Jesus said to Peter in John chapter 13, verse 8 to 10, If I wash thee not, you have no part with me. He said, Wash my head, wash my body, wash my hands, wash every part of me. And Jesus said, When your feet are washed, you are made clean every week. So the feet washing empowers you for cleanliness. We also have the mystery of the anointing oil. The Bible makes us understand that that anointing is the spirit of God 
And David was anointed in First Samuel 16 verse 13. And the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. And the Spirit of God is there to purge us, to cleanse us, to gather the wheat into the storehouse and to burn off the chaff. Whatever chaff is discoloring your destiny, I see the Spirit of God burning it off in the name of Jesus. But this morning, our focus is the communion table. How does the communion empower us to live a sanctified life? Number one, it empowers us to live like him. He said, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, he shall live by me. John chapter 6 and verse 57. He shall live by me. How did he live? He said, he was tempted at all points, yet without sin. So it empowers us to live a stainless, sinless life. Number two, it spiritually transfuses us with eternal and incorruptible life. Eternal life. Eternal life means incorruptible life. In John chapter 6 verse 54 down to verse 55, the Bible makes us to understand. He said, he that eats my blood and drink, eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. That eternal life is the seed of God. He says in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 and verse 9, he says there, he said, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose came the Son of God, that he may destroy the works of the devil. He said, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed is in him. His life is in him. When we partake of the communion, we are rejuvenating that eternal life. We are sparking up that eternal life. And that eternal life forbids the accommodation of sin. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three, when we take it in faith, we are delivered from death. John chapter five, 6 and verse 58, we are delivered from death. When we take it in faith, he said, this is that bread that cometh down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manners and are dead. He said, he that eateth this one, he shall live forever. And we know death talks about the result of sin. He said, for the wages of sin is death. So every hold of death, every sin that has determined to destroy you, as you partake of this table today, the hold shall be broken forever. <laughs> Number four, the blood of the covenant, which we partake of in the communion, purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We find that in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. He said, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit poured, offered himself without spot to God, poured your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Dead works, talk about dead operation. Dead operation. There are many people full of activity, but zero connectivity. He said, it will pour your conscience from dead works. Just running hair scatter, but nothing to show. Nothing to show. It will Purge your conscience from dead works. I see every conscience here today being purged in the name of Jesus. Now, the Holy Communion, it's important to see this, impacts on all three realms of human existence. Number one, it delivers our body from the plague of sickness and disease. It delivers our body. And that is why I know that not only are you being cleansed from sin today, but every affliction you came to this mountain with shall be cleansed of you forever. In Exodus 7 and verse 11, the Bible makes it clear. Exodus chapter 7 verse 11, he said there, he said, See, I've made you a God unto, unto verse 11. The Bible tells us there, he said, and he cast his rod down. He said, and the magicians did so with their enchantment. And in verse 12, the rod of Moses swallowed up their rod. As you are partaking of the bread, I see the rod of the magician being swallowed up on your behalf. <laughs> Everything defiling your body by sickness, by disease, is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number two, it imparts us with supernatural insight. In Luke chapter 24, verse 30 and verse 31, Jesus broke the bread and their eyes were open. I see somebody's spiritual eyes being opened here today. And number three, it sanctifies our spirit. 
like we saw in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. It purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Let us conclude here this morning with the benefits of sanctification. What are the benefits? Number one is divine health. Divine health. And we have touched on that already as we looked at the impact on the body. Divine health. And number two is divine favor. Psalm chapter 5 verse 12. Thou will arise and he said, and for thou will bless the righteous and with favor you will compass him round about as with a shield. And the favor of God on the life of any individual is what determines the limit of his or her destiny. You will never be limited. I said you will never be limited. I said you will never be limited. I said you will never be limited. Lift your right hand to heaven and ask the Lord this morning for grace. Grace to maintain a life of sanctification. One that is well pleasing unto him. Lord, I receive that grace today. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Before we conclude this teaching, it is so critical. Because there are many here today who have not yet surrendered their lives to Jesus. Please hear this. Doing good without God is still equal to filth. The Bible makes us to understand that the natural righteousness of man is filthiness before God. Without receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, no matter how good you are, you cannot cleanse your sin. Wherever you are this morning, therefore, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus and you want to be born again, you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior, rise on your feet quickly. Wherever you are, very quickly, rise on your feet. All over this place. All over this place. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are, rise on your feet. All over this place this morning, God has brought you here to save you and to set you free. Also, there are those who are here who you have disconnected. Maybe you were saved, but along the line, you found yourself disconnected from God. You find yourself disassociated from God. Certain things came into your life that brought a strain between your relationship with God. You found yourself rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling. God is saying it's finally time to be free. Rise on your feet quickly. Also, and everyone in those two categories, quickly move to the aisle. There are officials there. Rise on your feet quickly. Anyone who wants to rededicate his or life to Christ, rise on your feet quickly and move to the aisle that is closest to you. People in both categories, move to the aisle that is closest to you. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to stop filling your form for a moment. I want you to lift up your right hand. And say this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Lift up your right hand and say these words after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. But I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I pray for you. Father, I thank you for these precious ones who have brought themselves before you today. Lord, let your grace that has brought them, let that grace keep them all the days of their life. On the last day, may none here be missing in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of these individuals, Lord, we ask also that as they have presented themselves to you, you embrace them for the glory that is ahead. In Jesus' precious name, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, somebody believe God, say a loud amen. I said somebody believe God, say a loud amen. Please, for everyone who answered that call, make sure that your forms are filled legibly and make sure the forms are returned to the officials today before you leave. Ensure that every one of those forms right now are filled and returned to the officials and the Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Why not rise on your feet right now? Lift your hand to heaven. Lord, I receive that grace. I receive that grace right now. Thank you, mighty God. I receive that grace right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a big hand as we welcome our Father as he takes us forward.
Hallelujah. Let's have the um, communion stewards come around the table. Please don't forget to submit your forms. All of us who give our lives to Christ and we dedicate our, li our lives today, please make sure you give out your forms accordingly in the name of Jesus Christ. We are now taking this communion in faith. Whatever the Bible says it offers, that is what it offers. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever you stand for today shall be turned to a testimony in your life. Amen. Lift up your two hands to heaven and express your desire before the Lord right now. Express your desire before the Lord today. Let your spiritual desire be uppermost in your heart. When it's well with you spiritually, it will be well with you in all areas. It will be well with you in all areas. Whatever is not in Christ is not permitted in my life. There is no lust of the eyes, no lust of the flesh, no pride of life in Christ. They must not be found in me. There is no covetousness in Christ. They must not be found in me. There is no hatred and bitterness in Christ. They must not be found in me. Whatever disqualifies me for the glory reserved for the year 2016 by the power of the blood, I'm free from them tonight. From this communion table, I'm free at last. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. That young man said, I got angry at the communion table when I heard whatever is not in Christ is not permitted in you. What you don't want, you don't watch. What you don't resist has a right to remain. Somebody else is getting angry today, and that anger will turn to a testimony. That anger must turn to a testimony. Amen. No one's glorious destiny here shall be trashed. Amen. The enemy shall not make a mismate of anyone among us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, honor your word. We partake of this table in faith. And we see rooted out of our life everything that displeases you. Amen. Let it be this hour in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the same vein, Heal everyone physically. Amen. Heal everyone emotionally. Amen. Heal everyone mentally. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. let the spiritual health of every one of us be fully restored. Amen. Let the spiritual health of every one of us be fully restored. Amen. Whatever you don't want anymore, you don't see again. Amen. Whatever you hate to see, continue. You never see them again. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Please get seated. The choir continues to minister to the Lord as we partake of the Lord's table. A sign over your life, the journey of a new day. There is power, power, wonder walking power in the blood of the land. There is power, power. Precious blood of the land. There is power, there is power, 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 wonder walking power in the
Shall we lift our two hands to heaven? 
give him thanks again for what has happened to you this morning, what you are returning home with, a brand new change of raiment. Give him thanks for it. For a new level of sanctification, give him thanks for it. For knowing what way to go, which steps to go, to step up our spiritual life, give thanks. For partaking of the communion, a mystery that conquers the mystery of iniquity, give him thanks. For empowering you to live like Christ, empowering me to live like Christ, from the communion table, give him thanks. Celebrate him. Magnify him. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. How many were blessed by the word this time? How many will put that word to work in their lives? Now watch it. As long as you walk in the light of scriptures, you have a guaranteed future. Come and say, I have a guaranteed future. As long as I walk in the light of scriptures, I have a guaranteed future. Amen. Next Friday is a Christmas celebration service. Christmas celebration service. We are celebrating the gift of Jesus to the world and the gift of Jesus to your life. If Christ meant anything to you, then come with a heart of gratitude to celebrate the Father for the gift of his Son to the world and most especially to you. Imagine where you and I would have been without Jesus. Amen. Now, when he, when he landed first time as a baby, oh, I bring you glad tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Thank God you are part of the all people. Now, we are going to be celebrating that this coming um, uh, Friday. You are expected to come gorgeous. You are coming into a Jesus party. You are coming to celebrate the birth of the Son of God and the birth of your redemption in Christ. So come prepared for that. And then next Sunday is our global end of year Thanksgiving service. Amen. So it's a month of celebration. And I can tell you this, God is crowning this year for you with his goodness. And every part of your life will be dropping fatness. Amen. Therefore, we come in on Friday for a celebration of the gift of God that is in Christ. And then we come in on Sunday to again celebrate the fitness of God for the best year ever for this commission. The best year to date in this commission. And a great year for you in many respects. How many will give the Lord a big hand for that? May each one's thanksgiving be acceptable to God indeed. Amen. And may that set the stage for his manifestations in our life in the coming year. Amen. Please come with a heart of gratitude. Thank God for the seed that we sow in thanksgiving, but it's not as important as the heart of gratitude we are demonstrating to God. If God has been anything to you, has added any value to your life, come and show him gratitude. Can I hear your amen? amen? And then you have set the stage for his unstoppable interventions in your life next year. Jesus is Lord. Somebody blessed this morning. Lift up those two hands one more time. Every remaining day of this year establishes God's goodness in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every time you see your life under any form of attack, among the weapons in your hand is the communion weapon. You'll find your conscience, you know, derailing in one form or another. You take the communion to flush that debris out because his blood purges our conscience from every dead work to serve the living God. You don't wait for church service to get that done. You get that done every time you so require. Every time you so require, you open the table and take the communion and purge your life and forge ahead. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Therefore, 
the remaining days of this year, every day before going to bed, you are hereby instructed to partake of the communion. Yeah. And as you partake of the communion, you'll be surprised at the you that will arrive at the year 2016. Yeah. Every tendency for sin will be rooted out of your life. Yeah. That man said, my thought pattern changed. My outlook changed. I was no longer comfortable with my old friends. Everything turned as the conscience came back alive. Therefore, every night between now and the end of the year, you are taking communion every night to bed. And you are doing that, believing God for the, the blood of the everlasting covenant to empower you for dominion over sin and to keep your conscience purged from every dead work. And I can tell you, 2016, every one of us shall imagine a surprise to ourselves. <laughs> the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There's a great change since I met a girl. The place I used to go, I, I go, go there, there no more. more. And the place I used to go, I go there no more. The graves I used to go, I go there no more. There's a great change since I met the Lord. The things I used to think, I think them no more. The things I used to think, I think them no more. And the things I used to think, I think them no more. There's a great change since I met the Lord. Oh, great change. Since I met the Lord, great change. Since I met the Lord, great change. Since I met the Lord, there's a great change. Since I met the Lord. Now think of this: the things I used to say, I say them no more. And the things I used to say, I say them no more. The things I used to say, I say them no more. There's a great change since I met the Lord. Hold it. There's a great change since I made my choice. How many know it's a choice? He said, everyone that has this hope in him purified himself. There's a great change since I made my choice. Amen. Now let's go. The things I used to do. I do them no more. And the things I used to do. And I do them no more. And the things I used to do. I do them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Great change. Great change since I made my choice. There's a great change. Since I made my choice, there's a great change. Since I made my choice, there's a great change. Since I made my choice, the place I used to go, the place I used to go, and I go there no more. And the place I used to go, I go there no more. And the place I used to go, I go there no more. There's a great change. Since I made my choice. Great change, great change, since I made my choice. There's a great change, since I made my choice. There's a great change, since I made my choice. There's a great change, since I made my choice. The things I used to love, I used to love. Oh, I love them no more. And the things I used to love, I love them no more. And the things I used to love, I love them no more. There's a great change since I made my song. Great change, great change since I made the song. There's 
is a great change. Says I made the Lord. Yes, a great change. Says I made my son. Yes, a great change. Says I made my Great change. And says I made my job. Yes, a great change. Says I made my job. Yes, a great change. Says I made my son. The things I used to say, and I said them no more. And the things I used to say, I said them no more. And the things I used to say, I said them no more. There's a great change since I made my job. Great change, great change since I made my job. There's a great since I made my job, there's a great change. Since I made my job, there's a great change. Since I made my job, Hallelujah. Now watch it. The event of this season will be forever in your life. Whatever Jesus liberates any one of us from will never get back there again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Go in peace. Enjoy the best of time in your work with God. As you begin to lay foundation for the glorious year ahead of us, not one of us shall fail in our responsibility. Our choice is made, the devil is finished. The same way we chose you as our savior and he couldn't resist it. We make our choice for sanctification as a lifestyle. And we have triumphed. In Jesus' name. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. For every one of us right now on their journeys, those who are going, those who have gone, everyone returns back safely. Yeah. No evil report in our family. Yeah. This church family is going from glory to glory. Yeah. Every movement is covered by the blood yeah. within the city, outside the city, within the country, outside the country. And in the name of Jesus, every member of this family returns with their testimony. Yeah. So shall it be. From glory to glory. And from glory to glory. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations.
From glory to glory. Please let's take our seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. You are glad to be in service today. Shout hallelujah. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 125. As we read responsibly as our custom is. Psalm 125. We read responsibly from verse 1 to the end. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Verse 4 together. Shall we take verse 5 together? Everybody want to go. As for such as turn aside unto the crooked ways, the Lord shall lay them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Let's take it one more time. Verse 5. As for such as turn aside unto the crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. You are returning home with the peace of God in Jesus' name. You are welcome. From glory to glory, please. At this special communal service, let us listen to faith tabernacle announcements. The prophetic focus for the month is only the sanctified are ordained to be glorified. Can we boldly declare it? Number one, today is our special communion service. We should all get set for sanctification of our spirit, soul, and body through the cleansing power in his world and the mystery of the communion table. Number two, praise the Lord. Christmas celebration service holds on Friday, 25th, December 2015. There shall be only two services. The first service 7 to 9 a.m. and the second service 9 15 to 11 15 a.m. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Time is 5 30 to 6 30 a.m. Remember, it holds in over 600 locations across Lagos, Ota, and Enveros. Look out for the nearest location around you and engage. For your spiritual upliftment. There shall be no covenant hour of prayer on Friday because of the Christmas service. Number four, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday at our Zona Fellowship Center in Lagos and Ocha. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time is 6 p.m. Five, good news. The intended couples wear this coming weekend. It is Saturday, the 26th of December. We all are admonished to stand in the guard for them in prayers and share in their joy. Time is 11 a.m. Number six, Believers Foundation class and the Winner's Satellite Fellowship shall not hold this coming Monday and Saturday respectively in view of the massive movement of people in this season including teachers and officials who are to minister at the foundation class and at the WSF meetings. Number seven, all Shiloh 2015 messages are available on MP3 and DVD format. Please pick your copies from the Dominion bookstores around the Tabernacle and also from the ushers. Number eight, praise the Lord. Church calendar for 2016 is out. Members can pick their copies from the ushers at the entrances 
and in the bookstores. Copies of From Glory to Glory 2016 car and door stickers are also still available. Finally, number nine. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our end of year special Thanksgiving service. Amen. Both as a church and individual members, 2015 has been our most loaded year. With all of God's goodness, mercy, and grace in dimensions never known before. Therefore, we owe God thanks. It shall be a time of celebration of God's faithfulness among his people, which shall result in the preservation and multiplication of our blessings. Everyone shall come expectant for an encounter of a lifetime. We shall be holding only four services. Jesus is Lord. From glory to glory. In this service this morning, it is testimony time. Please let Cho, Cho Nolo Beatrice come quickly to share his testimony. Cho Nolo Beatrice, come quickly to share your testimony. And as he comes, let's listen to this documented testimony. Life transformation after quitting illegal business. I want to testify of what the Lord has done in my life. Since I contact this church, I am a businessman who used to deal in illegal business. But the day I came in contact with this church, I decided to repent of my sins and give up that business because I received the word of life from them. After I gave my life to Christ, I did not want to offend God again. So I gave up that business. Since then, God just transformed my life. I came home to minister to my parents who had not received Christ before. Glory be to God. Now they have received Christ in their lives. I give God all the glory. This is from Okonkwo C. Number two, <clears throat> healed of affliction after living righteously. I am a footballer. I had been having pains in my legs. Because of the pains, I had not been playing matches in my club. I ran into a friend in Lagos who worships here. He brought me to church. In a service, the bishop kept talking about righteousness. He said if we wanted to be healed of all ailments in our bodies, then we should start living righteously. I thought within me that I was probably not ill because I was still doing things that I knew were wrong. Then I made up my mind to put all those things aside to live righteously. I was here yesterday and on my way home, I discovered that I was healed of the pains. This morning, I tried out on road work I did a 10-kilometer road walk, and I discovered that all the pains were gone. This is for Ch from Chike P. Number three, low sperm count healed, wife now pregnant after repentance. I had been married for the past three years without any fruit of the womb to show for it. As we went for medical checkup, the doctor said I had low sperm count and that my wife didn't have weight to conceive. He said there was something in her womb to be repaired. Since then, the man had been treating us, but no result. Before then, my wife had been a member of this commission. During a service in November last year, when the bishop made the altar call, I came out and gave my life to Christ. Bishop stressed the importance of living a righteous life. It hit me. Right there, I decided to live a righteous life. That was how God healed me of the low spam count. Right now, my wife is three months pregnant. I thank God. This is from Jim Labs. And in this service this morning, 
you are next on the line for your own testimony. In Jesus' name. From glory to glory. And from glory to glory. It is offering time. I said it is offering time. Please quickly package your offering if you have not done so and write something upon it unto the Lord in honor of him. And as we do so, I want us to recall the scripture in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that for your sake he was, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty may be made rich. This morning, I see the same grace that is curing iniquity, bringing you into prosperity in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Quickly package your offering if you have not done so, and everyone rise on your feet and lift it up unto the Lord and present it before him this morning. Lord, I'm here in your presence this morning. Lord, let this offering be acceptable unto you. Let that same grace that is empowering me against sin also empower me for prosperity. Lift your voice and speak to the Lord in a moment. Let him hear the voice of your supplication before him. Lord, I present my seed, a seed in righteousness. Thank you, mighty God, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep it lifted as we pray. Father, this morning we present our seed before you. Your word says that your grace, which also cures our iniquity, empowers us for prosperity. Let each one here be empowered for prosperity, not only now, but in the coming year of glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Please, you may take your seat and let us welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister to the Lord. Spirit, I am free. There are no chains on me. Jesus already gave me the key. Still in the spirit, I am free. I am free. Of righteousness, stealing the spirit. I'm free. Stealing the spirit. I am free. He has given me the key. There ain't no chance. Jesus gave me. Give me the key. Kill of righteousness, stealing the spirit. I'm free. I am going to New Jerusalem. Lord, keep me in his hand. Do I walk through the valley alone? Is that to lead me on? I am going to New Jerusalem. Lord, keep me in his hand. Do I walk through the valley all alone? Is that to lead me on? I've got my eyes on the heavenly 
liberty from sin and unrighteousness that Christ already purchased for us through his death and resurrection. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for that. Give him glory. Give him praise. Ask him to visit you in this service. Ask him to send you your own word that will open your life into a new realm altogether. Take that from the Lord right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They are not impossible. They are not designed to punish us. They are not designed to afflict us. 
First John chapter 5, verse 3. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not tortuous. His commandments are not put in place to afflict us. His commandments are not impossible. He's not a wicked God. He won't say for us to do something that he knows is impossible to do. As it is written, be ye holy as I am holy. Who is speaking there? God. Jesus also said, be ye perfect. Even as your heavenly father is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Now, that means we have all the potentials in redemption to be. Lift up your two hands and ask the Lord, I want to experience true sanctification, holiness, and perfection in the year ahead of me. I want to prepare me a worthy vessel. A worthy vessel in your hand. A worthy vessel in your house. You will never ask me to do what is impossible to do. Therefore, show me the way. Again, this morning, by your word, show me the way. Put my feet on the highway of holiness. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, let this day be a certain day to each one of us. Let it be a day of encounter with destiny indeed. Let today open a new chapter to each one's life. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Just before we get started, next Friday is um, our Christmas celebration service. Amen. And what we are doing is simply celebrating the gift of Christ to the world. If that has meant anything to you, then come with a heart of gratitude and be a major player in that celebration service. We come in to say, Father, thank you for the gift of your son to the world and what that meant to my life. I thank you for that gift, making a difference in my own life, in my family, in my health, and in all that pertains to me. So it's a celebration service. So we are coming gorgeous. We're coming set to show God he has done us well by sending Christ into our lives. Can I hear your amen? amen? So it's a celebration service. We come with full celebration mentality and come in to show how grateful we are for the gift of Christ to the world. Then next Sunday is our global end of year thanksgiving service in this ministry it's always the last sunday of every month and all we are doing is to count our blessings name them one by one and be surprised again what the lord has done god has been so good to you am i correct has god been good to you at all has he shown you mercy and favor have you seen the lord's goodness in the land of the living Okay, again, another huge celebration time of the goodness of God in our lives on the 27th. So, it's a whole celebration season. Can I hear your amen? amen. For those of us who are traveling, 
uh, within the country, outside the country. Um, you'll be around where any of the churches are, uh, almost in every village in Nigeria and wherever. Please be sure you are part of these celebrations. It is not going to the beach on Christmas morning. It doesn't show uh, connectivity. It doesn't show what? Uh, you, are, you are smarter than that. So be in God's presence and receive again the oppressions of his gift on your life. Um, wherever you are in the world, you are reachable. You can be assessed, accessible by internet and by every other means to be part of this celebration time. How you begin matters a lot in determining the outcome. We are in the great preparatory days for the heavy weight of glory that is reserved for us in 2016. Please be part of this personal commitment to spiritual preparation, setting the stage for the heavy weight of glory that awaits you in 2016. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have been looking at the subject, sanctification, gate, covenant gateway to glorification. Sanctification, a covenant gateway to glorification. Our text for the month is Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standard sure. That is defining the sure foundation of God for anyone to live a glorious life. The Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That is the sure foundation for a great future in the kingdom. It demands a departure from iniquity. It is that departure that creates our great and glorious future. But in a great house, there are many vessels. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Some of gold, some of silver. Some of wood and some of earth. But if any man purges himself of all these things, he shall be a vessel to honor sanctified and fit for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Say amen there. Amen. What that means is that each one determines what kind of a vessel it becomes. Each one determines what level of glory he operates in by ensuring this foundation in his life. In Psalm 11, and verse 3, the Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Departure from iniquity is the sure foundation that guarantees our glorious future. Another foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Everything the Bible calls foundation is the sure foundation. We are going nowhere without a thirst and a hunger after righteousness. Sanctification is a process of one's quest to please God. You just want God pleased. So your hunger and thirst becomes unquestionable, unquench, unquenchable, sorry, unquenchable because you want to please God. You want to please God. And I pray that that desire will be delivered to every one of us for a testimony. Amen. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. But we are confronted with great resistances to pleasing God. Satan is all out to dislodge as many as we let him. He is behind 
the challenge of our life to please God. And so we must know how to confront him. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7, he said, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and only he who now let it shall or will let until he be taken out of the way. So it's, it's not about principles. There are forces behind the defilements of the saints. And the ultimate of this force is to take us out of the way, get us out of God, get us connected with God. But that shall not happen in your own life. But thank God there is a greater mystery. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. Mind the words. The first one is the mystery of iniquity. Now we're coming to the great mystery of righteousness. That means any day, any time, when we engage the mystery of godliness, we will subdue the mystery of iniquity without effort. Because one is higher than the other. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. We are contending with principles and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits in high places. So the mystery of iniquity is in the realm of darkness. And the mystery of righteousness or godliness is in the realm of light. And that light shines in darkness and darkness can comprehend it. So if we have a good grip of the mystery of righteousness, we will live triumphantly over the mystery of iniquity. Can I hear your amen? Because the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. When you turn on the light, darkness flees. In the same way, everything anyone may have been struggling with, as we come into a full grip of the mystery of godliness, we shall begin to rule over them. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. And that we are dealing with in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 verse 11, unto us is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are in parables. So understanding the mysteries of the kingdom puts us on top of the mystery of iniquity. Puts us absolutely on top of the mystery of iniquity. And in the name of Jesus, from this service today, I see every one of us walking in dominion over sin and unrighteousness. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. It's also important for us to know that understanding how to overcome temptation is key to living a sanctified life. The master tempter is the devil. Our great deliverer is Jesus. We must say, Mesa, Jesus is not the tempter. The Father is not the tempter. The Holy Ghost is not the tempter. If they were the tempter, then they can't be the deliverers at the same time. In James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God tempts no man with evil. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Say with me, God is not my tempter. He's my great deliverer. Now he said, but everyone is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when loss is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. But the question is, even the lost in us is as orchestrated by the mystery of iniquity. Forces behind the sin 
just like in the case of Zechariah, in the case of Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, how he was clothed with a filthy garment, helpless. Heaven had to intervene to bail him out. In the same vein, heaven is intervening on behalf of people here today who are under any siege of iniquity. You are coming out in grand style. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. That was not David's nature. A man after Muhammad who will do all my will. That was David. God was persuaded David would only do his will. Yet, Satan stood against him and provoked him. Joab couldn't help him. Nobody could reach him. He was hell-bent. And he saw her. But in that First Chronicles 21 verse 1, Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to go against the law of God. David and God said, I have found a man after my own heart who shall do all my good pleasure. David suddenly came under the siege of Satan. This is to show what forces are there behind the saying that need be conquered for us to live a sanctified life. This is very vital. This is very important. There are forces behind the saying. The Bible calls some of them the spirit of the world. What do they do? The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12, he said, We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So that is the spirit of the world. And what they walk is 1 John 2, 15 to 17. They are the forces behind the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. Therefore, today, everyone under the siege of the spirit of the world, by the power of the blood of Jesus, you have your victory today. You have your victory today. You have your victory today. Then we have what we call the lying spirit. First Kings 22 and verse 22. Who will deceive this king to go to war? He said, I will. He said, How? He said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. There is a lying spirit. And what was the purpose? To disconnect us from God. Psalm 101, verse 7. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my presence. So, the aim is to disconnect us from God, extending, exaggerating, elongating the truth all of the time. The ultimate aim is to get us out of the way, to disconnect us with God. There are forces behind the sin, and so there is no technical way out of it. There are spiritual forces that are at work behind the sin. We can only engage counter spiritual forces to dislodge them. Counter spiritual forces to dislodge them. There is, for instance, the spirit of wardom. That is the spirit of sexual immorality that will go from even humans to animals. There were cases of some fellows who are climbing on peaks. Real life story. Sexual perversion of all shades. We'll see at chapter 5 and verse 4. It said, because the spirit of wardom is in the midst of them, and they have not known the law. Whatever these forces are, today in the name of Jesus, 
as you make your choice for sanctification, they will lose their grip of your life. How do we overcome temptations? What must we do to overcome temptations? It's impossible to live a sanctified life without the help of the Spirit of God. And among the virtues available to us is what we call the spirit of obedience. Say with me, the spirit of obedience. It empowers you and I to walk in obedience without stress. Ezekiel 36 and verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You shall keep my judgment and do them. The spirit of obedience. We must continue to crave for the endowment of the spirit of obedience. So that walking in obedience becomes a delight, not a struggle. A delight, not a struggle. A delight, not a struggle. Jesus said, We are in those my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my father. Power to obey God at all cost lies in the spirit of obedience. Until one is possessed with it, you will have questions again and again to ask. The spirit of obedience is the empowerment to obey God at all cost and to all length. Receive that this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. For us to walk in sanctification, we must put on the armor of light. We must put on the armor of light. That simply means walking in the light of scriptures. Operating in the light of scriptures. Operating by the dictates of scriptures. For instance, the Bible says, abstain from all appearances of evil. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. Abstain, stay away, keep off. The Bible says, make no provision for the flesh to feed the, the lost thereof. Make no provision. He says, resist the devil and he will flee. You don't resist him, he will remain. Build bulwarks against his intrusion in your life. Walking in the light of scriptures is putting on the armor of light. Walking by the dictates of scriptures. Reacting to issues according to scriptural instructions. Put it on the armor of light. Lift up your right hand and consciously receive a fresh endowment of the spirit of obedience. Come on, take it now from God. Take it, pray, pray in the spirit, pray with understanding. I receive this morning a fresh endowment of the spirit of obedience. I receive this morning a fresh endowment of the spirit of obedience. So that obey you becomes a delight, not a struggle. I want to be that man of Psalm 112 that greatly delights himself in your commandment. Oh Lord, help me. Retu Sali, Shakli, Rualita. Take it from the Lord. And grace to walk in the light of scriptures. Let's receive it right now.
thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. As horrible as those forces are, a genuine choice to live for God will disarm them. The man down there purpose in his heart, no way. And he succeeded. Even in the era of sin, he prevailed. Now we are in the era of righteousness, we shall prevail much more. Every genuine choice to live a sanctified life will enjoy divine backing. Because that is the will of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. This is the will of God. So every genuine desire and choice for sanctification will enjoy divine backing. Daniel purpose in his heart not to defy himself. Daniel 1, I mean, and verse 8, and then you saw it in chapter 6 and verse 5, they could not find anything against Daniel except against him concerning the law of his God. Amen. And he prospered all his life. But he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that forsakes them, he that confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. It's your turn. You are returning from this service a brand new person. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Your choice and my choice are far more important than our prayers. But until our choice is made, our Lord cannot be delivered. I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that thou and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Choose life. Even in the Old Testament, God was making people responsible for their lot by the choice that they make. Choose life. This morning, you will see the wonders of your choice yeah. as you make them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. How do we overcome temptation number three? We must engage in continuous spiritual exercises unto godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness profitable unto all things or exercising oneself unto godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. Exercises. You know the reason why? Sanctification is a spiritual race set before us. Read that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The Bible says, We are by sin, we are for sin that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. He said, For consider him who suffers such great contradiction against sinners against him, of sinners against himself lest ye be weary and faint in your minds for ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin that tells you how terrible the conflict only the violent can take it by force come and say I'm taking it <laughs> see sanctification as a race set before us And you can't win a race without subscribing to the required exercises. Paul, the runner, said, Know you not that in the race run all and one receive the prize? So wrong that you may obtain. I therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat the air, 
but I put my body under. I bring it to subjection. Let's have a preach to others. I myself should be a castaway. So it's a race. A highly demanding race. It's the ultimate race in the Christian journey. You know, because of where our end is determined. Glory to God. In First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. But ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and ye are and by the Spirit of our God. So that's the race. It's the race of sanctification. Receive grace this morning to win the prize in this race. Say with me, I must inherit the kingdom of God. I'd like to say conversely, I must inherit the kingdom of God. I must inherit the kingdom of God. So whatever makes it impossible, I come against them today. I must win this race. I must make heaven at last. So it's not just about next year, 2016. It's about eternity. Come on, say it's about eternity. Say it loud. It's about eternity. If only in this world we are proper, then we are most of all men miserable because we are trading off eternity for temporality. Don't do that. Does it make sense? We are here only for a short while. A thousand years like one day with God. Now you can imagine... We're going to be there with him forever and forever. So no matter how many days we spend here, it has nothing compared with what awaits us there. Say with me, I must not miss it. Say it loud. I must not miss it. I must not miss it. Again, I must not miss it. Paul said, I exercise myself to have a conscience that is void of offense both towards God and towards man. And here do I exercise myself to have always a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards man. I exercise myself to make sure I'm on the right course at all times. So every time something wants to cross your mind that is against God, you rise up against it. You pray in the spirit. Build yourself up upon your most holy faith. You don't watch it sit on your life. You say, no, that's not me. That cannot be made. Before the thought graduates to an act, you have destroyed it. Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? Number four, to live a sanctified life, to overcome temptations, we must keep a right company. We must keep a right company. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. No matter how anointed, walking with the wrong people can lead to a wreck. Can lead to a wreck no matter who the man is. No matter who the woman is. I had a story of a very colorful family. And the wife had a lot of friends coming in and coming in. And they were all like divorcees like that. That marriage ended up in divorce. Every effort. No, don't work with these people. She won't agree. No, don't work with these people. She walked away from the marriage. Walked out. You can't believe it. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. I can tell of what stuff you are by showing me who your friends are. Is it? You are a reflection of the people you work with. You are a reflection of the people you work with. It's so important. And friendship is by choice, not by force. If you are not gaining values, you are losing values. It's not that there's no middle way in it. 
grace to be smart enough to disconnect from who you must disconnect with and connect with God to the end. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Amnon joined hands with Jonadab and led him to his grave. A man of destiny was walking around with a son of Belia and that ended his journey. No one's journey here will end in a crash. No one's journey here will end in a crash. When we try to establish the fact that there are forces behind the scene which we call the mercy of inequity, the things that move you to do what you don't want to do, the things that climb on you to influence you negatively, they are there. And that's why God has also introduced and made available to us vital kingdom mysteries through which we dominate the mystery of inequity. Can I hear your amen? amen. Among these is the mystery of the Holy Communion, which empowers us to live like Christ. So today, whatever is not like Christ in anyone's life shall be flushed out. The mystery of the blood of sprinkling, which separates us from the ministry of the destroyer. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and I will not suffer the destroyer to smite, to come into you in your house. I see the blood, I will just pass over and the destroyer shall have no way to assess you. By the mystery of the blood of sprinkling, we are shielded from the wicked ministry of the destroyer. Can I hear your amen? amen. And the thief coming on God for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I'm come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This is vital, this is crucial. The mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Then the mystery of feet worship, because there are this cleansing power. In that water. He said, Whosoever is washed need not save wash his body, but is clean every weight. Clean. There is cleansing power. That young man with 22 years of vomiting and eating his vomit ended there at the feet washing. Cleansing power. When some people misbehave in my place, they say it's in his blood. That other person went to the water and Sikusel and Nehemiah disappear after 24 years. So whatever the enemy may have planted in your blood that's making you misbehave against the law of God, you overcome them by the mysteries of the kingdom. There is power in feet worship. And then I'd like you to know there is power in the anointing oil to destroy the root of sin in our life. It shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken from our shoulder, his shoulder from our neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Nothing is more spiritually token than sin to a believer. And it chokes men unto death when allowed. When you don't do anything about it, it chokes people unto death. You say, and say Well, I think that's my lot. But today we look at the communion briefly before we serve the table of the Lord. What is in the communion that sanctifies? What is in the communion that sanctifies? According to scriptures in John chapter 6 and verse 54. John 6 and 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. So it means there is eternal life on the table. So it's a kind of renewal of your eternal life insurance. Every time you partake of the Lord's table, you are renewing your life in Christ. You are renewing your life in Christ. So as you partake of this table, see yourself 
has been infused anew with the virtues of eternal life. You have been infused anew with the virtues of eternal life. That is, Jesus is saying, partake of this table with the mentality of the infusion of eternal life. I am renewing my eternal life policy with God. Eternal life is flowing afresh in my veins. I'm walking to my liberty. Glory to God. In verse 57, number 2, what is in the communion that sanctifies, Jesus said, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, even so he that eateth me shall live by me. And I said several times that that simply means, I live like the Father. Anyone that eats me shall live like me. Therefore, whatever is unlike Jesus in anyone's life today must give way. Yeah. As you partake of the Lord's table, they must give way. Yeah. As they, you partake on the Lord's table, they must give way. Yeah. Somebody testified. He said, he heard me saying this same thing on the communion service day. And he said, today must mark the end of this siege of masturbation. It ended there. Ended there forever. So whatever has been tormenting your spiritual life that cannot be traced in Christ is illegal in your life. Yeah. And must give way today. Yeah. They must all give way today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. They must all give way today. They must all give way today. What is in the communion that empowers us to live a sanctified life? That is empowered to dominate sin because the wages of sin is death. John 6.58 The Bible says This is that bread which came down from heaven that a man not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. It that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So as you partake of this communion, see death destroyed. See the root of death destroyed. And the root of death is sin. See the root of death destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those are the things that are available in the communion among many others that empowers us to live a sanctified life. The blood we partake of in the communion is the blood of the everlasting covenant which purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. The Bible says that the, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And then, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. So the blood has power to make us perfect to do his will. To make us perfect to do his will. Make you perfect to do his will walking in you that which is well placed in his sight through Jesus Christ is able to walk in us what is well placed so as you partake of the blood see yourself partaking of a prescription that makes us perfect in doing the will of God can I hear your amen? amen. and doing that which is well placed in his sight in chapter 9, verse 14 of Hebrews, the Bible says, How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? There is power in the blood. And we partake of it wrong in the communion. There is power in the blood. Jesus said, This is my blood of the New Testament. It's no guess what. This is my blood. So there is power in that blood to walk in us what is well placed in the sight of God. To make us perfect in doing His will, to purge our conscience from every dead work to start the living God, 
please approach this table with that mentality today. From this day, I shall no longer have struggle to please God. Blood of Jesus, begin to walk in me that which is well pleased in the sight of God. Making me perfect to do his will at all times. Purging my conscience from every dead walk to serve the living God. As you approach this table with that understanding, you are returning a changed man. You are returning a changed woman. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let's round up, round up as we look at the core benefits of sanctification. Some of the core benefits of sanctification include divine health. Say with me, divine health. Say it loud, divine health. Until sin came, there was no place for sickness. God never made provision for healing of his people in the Garden of Eden. They were immune to sickness and disease. Sickness only trades sin to come into the world and death by sin. Jesus healed two people that are very notable here the man at the pool of Bethesda. He said in verse 14, Now you are made whole. Say no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Say no more. That means just saying, sin brought him down into that trouble. And if he goes back to sin, he will see worse of it. He was there for 38 years. How many years? You won't see that kind of trouble. <laughs> Another man was brought down from the roof and Jesus healed him. How? He said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. How is this man that forgiveth sin? He said, which one is easier to say your sins are forgiven or be healed? That means he was dealing with the issue from the root. Sanctification guarantees divine help. Therefore, whatever you may have lost to the enemy, whatever anyone here may have lost to the enemy through sin, I decree divine restoration today. Yeah. Quickly, number two, benefits of sanctification. Say with me, divine favor. Say it loud, divine favor. The Lord shall compass the righteous about with favor as with a shield. Favor always accompanies the righteous. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 he purposed in his heart, Daniel purposed not to defy himself. Verse 9 the Lord brought him into favor with the keepers of the prison. Joseph chose to live a sanctified life and favor found him as a slave Favor found him as a prisoner. You can't shut the door against favor. Favor from heaven will speak anywhere. Therefore, throughout the coming year, you'll be flowing in favor. They couldn't find anything against Daniel except concerning the law of his God. And Daniel was just operating in higher realms of favor by the day, year in, year out. The rain of favor will never stop coming upon your life. It takes a commitment, a hunger, and a task after righteousness to keep flowing in favor. It takes that commitment. Joseph had it, Daniel have it, had it, you will have it. You will have it. The favor of God will always trace the righteous. Every time you see righteousness, please don't let smooth talkers confuse you. Be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3, 7. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Don't cut off somebody's hair and say, I'm righteous with God in Christ Jesus. No. You're a murderer in the devil. No. Don't steal somebody's item and say, I'm the righteous. You are not. Jesus wasn't a thief. He wasn't stealing. It is what we do, not what we explain. Somebody's changing level. Why am I saying this? 
we are entering the year of the rise of giants. And giants rise only by favor. How do they rise? Giants rise on the wings of favor. In the year 2016, you will never lack favor in your journey. And finally, divine secrets. We assess divine secrets through sanctification. The secret of the Lord is to them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 25, verse 14. We assess divine secrets through sanctification. And we know that divine secret is at the root of every star in the kingdom. Divine secret. Access to divine secret will make a star out of any domain. Access to divine secret will make a star out of any domain. Many stars will rise on our platform this coming year. God will be showing people what to do per time. We are to do it part time yeah. and strange things will be coming out of it as a result. Yeah. Job said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. God's secret made a star out of Job. He became the greatest of all businessmen in his time. Who was Job? A man that feared God and eschewed evil. A perfect man. Job chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 and this man became the greatest of all men in the east and he showed us the secret he said I had access to divine secrets I pray your access into realms of divine secret as you begin to embrace godly lifestyle let me hear your loudest amen, amen. let me hear your loudest amen. amen let me hear your loudest amen, amen. There is no short call. One secret made a prime minister out of a prisoner. In as much as God has shown you all these things, there is no one in your class. There are many people here in the year coming, God will show you things that kings have been looking for all their life. Yeah. He will announce to them that he has shown you and they will come and look for you. Yeah. But the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. So it takes the fear of God to qualify for access to the secrets of God. In the year coming, beginning from now, you will not miss it. Yeah. Let me conclude by saying, the quality of our preparation will determine the greatness of our manifestation. Jotham became great because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Please, make these last days of the year season, your own season of great preparation for great manifestation in the year ahead. You shall not miss it. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just quickly before we partake of the Lord's table, with a desperation for a change of level in our spiritual life, wherever you are, you are not born again yet, I'd like to pray with you. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. New birth is the step number one to a word of sanctification. You can't be sanctified until you are first saved. Therefore, wherever you are in this service this morning, you want to give your life to Christ, you want your sins forgiven, you want to experience the reality of new birth, please stand to your feet and I'll be praying with you. Stand to your feet, God bless you. God bless you. Everyone that wants to give your life to Christ, become a child of God, please stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there where you are, please stand. God bless you. Stand to your feet. It's the best way to end the year, to start a new life, to have a new beginning. Please stand to your feet. Some money to get up wherever you are. Please get up on your feet, whether in the main bow or in the, over, in the galleries. Please stand right now to be prayed for. Can I request that you move to the nearest eye to where you are? Some officials are there to help you out in filling out your forms. Please move in quickly. Move to the nearest one to where you are, and then you'll be prayed for. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. Wherever you are this morning, you want to reconnect back to God. A broken branch of a tree is dead, only a matter of time. But you want to reconnect back to God today. You were once born again, but 
at a point I will say disconnection, and you know it. You want to reconnect back to God, please stand to your feet, and I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to dedicate your life to Christ this morning, please stand. God bless you, please stand. God bless you. You want to dedicate your life to Christ this morning, please stand to your feet. As you stand, please move in to the nearest eye to where you are, and then you'll be prayed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. Please bow your heads quickly. You can complete your forms afterwards. And lift up your right hand to heaven as I lead you in prayers. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Bow your heads, lift up your right hand, complete your form after these prayers. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. I therefore proclaim you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior, from this day onward, even forever. Amen. Keep your hands up. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered to the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please put down your hands. Church, give the Lord a big hand for them. Complete your forms in a moment. Let the stewards please take their positions right now as we serve the Lord's table. Please complete your forms and bring, give them out to the kingdom friends that are standing with you. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Please stand to your feet, saints. Lift up your two hands and give expression to your expectations from the Lord's table today. Give expression to your expectation from the Lord's table today. I'm partaking of this communion for a spiritual transfusion of eternal life. A renewal of eternal life in my being. I'm partaking of this communion to live like Jesus today. Whatever is not in Christ must not be found in me anymore. I'm partaking of this everlasting blood, everlasting, the blood of everlasting covenant to empower me and make me perfect to do the will of God and to do those that are well pleasing in his sight to purge me from all to purge my question of, of all defilement I must not miss it this time I must not miss it this time thank you Father in Jesus precious name we partake of this communion and each one's desire is delivered. Yeah. Every spiritual sickness and disease is declared healed. Yeah. Every solica, mental, emotional disease is declared healed. Yeah. Every physical affliction is declared healed. Yeah. We partake of the three realm impact of this mystery today. Yeah. Let it be the portion of everyone. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated as we partake of the Lord's table. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power.
for the impact of today's service on our lives. If you have received any word from the Lord, give him thanks for it. If you are sure the mercy of the Holy Communion has imparted on your life, give him thanks for it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Daniel made his choice and God backed him up. How many have made their choice to live a sanctified life? This is the assurance we have from God's word. You are enjoying divine backing to live that life from now. Your inheritance shall not be robbed you by the enemy. Yeah. Joseph made that choice. He triumphed. 
how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? He fled. He looked first as a fool, but he returned as a living testimony. Everyone who has made his choice to live a sanctified life begin to enjoy divine backing from now. This is one instruction I want you to hold. Every prescription of the great physician is for as often as they are required. So every time your spirit man is coming under a siege, you bring out your weapons. They are not carnal. They are mighty through God to be of strongholds. And take the blood, take the bread and say, I have the redemptive right to live like Christ. To manifest the reality of eternal life. To be purged from everything that defies. And to make me perfect in doing the will of God. And to do things that are well placed in his side. Therefore I take this communion as my bailout. From this siege. And then you are out of it. Can I hear your amen? amen? You don't have to wait for feet washing to be announced in church. If your feet is moving in the wrong direction. You wash your feet. Look, walk straight. Walk straight. Walk straight. Hallelujah. If it appears some chaff is going to your system, you take the shot of the oil and you say to it, Matthew 3, 11 and 12. My system is purged of every chaff and the chaff is born with unquenchable fire. We have to be smart. Somebody said I was taking communion like taking folic acid and it got resolved. Don't wait for feet washing in church. It comes once in a quarter. Wash your feet to make your path straight. Can I hear your amen? amen? Sprinkle the blood to keep the destroyer away from your tent. Can I hear your amen? amen? Anyway, throughout the remaining days of this month, we are going to bed with a shot of the communion. Amen. Everybody in this church, text those who have traveled. We are taking communion to bed every night. And the purpose is for us to live to please him all through the year 2016, beginning from now. How many believe that? Here is the word of the Lord. Each of us will emerge a surprise to ourselves that year. Amen. Let's sing this song a little before we go. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Is it your choice to live a sanctified life? Okay, quiet, let's sing it one minute. The things I used to do, I do them no more. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Great change since I made my choice. Great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. The things I used to do, the things I used to do, I do them no more. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Great change, great change since I made my choice. Yes, a great change since I made my choice. Yes, a great change since I made my choice. Yes, a great change since I made my choice. The place I used to go, the place I used to go, I go there no more. And the place I used to go. I go there no more, and the place I used to go, I go there no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Oh, great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. There's a great change. The things I used to drink, the things I used to say, I see them no more. And the years I used to say, I see them no more. And the things I used to say, I see them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. 
the things I used to drink, I drink them no more. And the things I used to drink, I drink them no more. And the things I used to drink, I drink them no more. There's a great things I made my choice. The things I used to smoke. I smoke them no more, and the things I used to smoke, I smoke them no more, and the things I used to smoke, I smoke them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. The things I used to say, I used to say, I say them no more, and the things I used to say, I say them no more, and the things I used to say, I say them no more. There's a great change since I made my choice. Oh, great change. Great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. There's a great change since I made my choice. Has given you the power of choice. And as your choice is made today, your testimony will be here tomorrow. Yeah. Whatever displeases God in your life has been flushed out. Yeah. They will not come in there again. Yeah. The power to do them is destroyed right now. Yeah. The test for them is destroyed right now. Yeah. And the name of Jesus is glorified. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks one more time for his goodness and his mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please don't forget, from glory to glory, sticker is still available. You need to identify before you can share of the glory. Can I hear your amen? amen. Also, the calendar of the church is out. It's um, a very interesting site. And one of the interesting things there is that you open January with a picture of the Faith Theater. And that will help you to believe whatever God has packaged for you in the year 2016. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall do in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. From glory to glory. Come on, if that's your new name, let me hear it carefully. From glory to glory. Let all the devils who think your life is headed to nowhere. Hear you say it now. From glory to glory. And from glory to glory. Congratulate your neighbor to your right and to your left. As you find our way going there.
work from restarting your computer. From glory to glory. Praise the Lord. May you please be seated. Our call to worship this morning is from the book of Psalm 125. And we are going to be reading responsibly. I read verse 1, you read verse 2 until we get to verse 5. Praise the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abided forever. Verse 2. So the Lord is around about his people from henceforth even forevermore. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Verse 4. We are going to read verse 5 together. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Shall we please read verse 3 together? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. The water of his words this morning will sanctify you holy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are welcome. From glory to glory, it is time for faith tabernacle announcement. The prophetic focus for the month is... Only the sanctified are ordained to be glorified. Shall we say that together? Uh, number one, today is our special communal service. We should all get set for sanctification of our spirit, soul, and body through the cleansing power in His Word and the mystery of the communal table. Number two, praise the Lord. Christmas celebration service holds on Friday, 25th December, 2015. There shall be only two services. First service, 7 to 9 a.m. And second service, 9.15 to 11.15 a.m. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow Monday to Saturday. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Remember, it holds in over 600 locations across Lagos, Ota, and Evirons. Look out for the nearest location around you and engage for your spiritual upliftment. There shall be no covenant hour of prayer on Friday because of the Christmas service. Number four, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos and Ota. Remember, we shall all be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time is 6 p.m. Number five, good news. 20 attending couples were this coming weekend, Saturday, 26 December, to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. Time is 11 a.m. Number six. Believers Foundation class 
and the Winners and Less Fellowship shall not hold this coming Monday and Saturday, respectively, a view of the massive movement of people this season, including teachers and officials who are to minister at the foundation class and at the LSF meetings. Number seven, all Shiloh 2015 messages are available on MP3 and DVD format. Please pick your copies from the Domino bookstores around the Tabernacle and also from the ushers. Praise the Lord. Church calendar for 2016 is out. Members can pick their copies from the ushers at the addresses and in the bookstores. Copies of From Glory to Glory 2016 card and dusty cards are also available. Number nine. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our end of year special Thanksgiving service. Both as a church and individual members. 2015 has been our most loaded year with all of God's goodness, mercy and grace in dimensions never known before. Therefore, we owe God thanks. It shall be a time of celebration of God's faithfulness among his people. We shall result in the preservation and multiplication of our blessings. Everyone shall come expectant for an encounter of a lifetime. We shall be holding only for services. Jesus is Lord. From glory to glory, in this service, it is testimony time. Put your hands together for Jesus if you're happy to hear that. Please, shall we listen to the following documented testimonies? Number one, supernatural turnaround after repentance. I gave my life to Christ in 1985, but it was a fake one. I wasn't living life like a born again Christian. Meanwhile, I had been smoking for 14 years. As I came to Canaan this year, I repented of my sin and rededicated my life to Christ. Ever since, things have not been the same. The 14 years claim smoking stopped. Now, I have been enjoying supernatural turnaround. I praise the Lord. The testifier is Johnson. Oh, number two. HIV AIDS destroyed via communion. I joined this church, but left after some time. Last year, I felt strange, so I went for another test. To my amazement, I was diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. At that point, depression took over. After a while, I went on a three-day fast. During the fast, God told me, when you are ready, tell me. And I said, I am ready, Lord. What do I do? He said, go back to where you belong. That was how I returned to the winner's family. On July 14, during one of the services, I rededicated my life to Christ. And the next day, I enrolled for the Word of Faith Bible Institute, Wolf Bay. While at Wolf Bay, I asked God to give me a word for my healing. And he gave me Proverbs 20, 30, Isaiah 53, 5, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. After I read those scriptures, I partook of the communion. And today, HIV 8 is gone forever. Praise the Lord. The testifier is Olua Jimmy Michael Goodness. Number three, four years masturbation and womanizing gone. I have been in the bondage of masturbation and womanizing for four years. At one of the Sunday services, I told God that if he could do it for me, I would serve him more. That day, the undesirable habit ceased. I did not feel any urge for masturbation. However, Something happened one day. The urge reoccurred simply because I did not share my testimony. At the last breakthrough night, the bishop stressed the importance of serving God with a pure heart. It hit me. So I repented of all my evil ways 
asking God for forgiveness. I told God that if he could deliver me from masturbation and womanizing, that I will share my testimony today. As I am standing here, I am free from masturbation and womanizing. I can't feel the urge anymore. I bless the name of the Lord. The testifier is Michael E. By the mystery of the communion today, every fitness shall be clear of your life in the name of Jesus. Put off your hands for, together for Jesus. From glory to glory. In this fourth service, it is offering time. Can somebody say it louder, believingly? So very quickly, let us uh, package our worship seed. If you have not already done so, uh, beginning with our tithes. Our tithes, remember, is 10% of all of God's blessings upon our life. And after that, your worship offering for today. And uh, if you have also committed yourself to God, or any other seed you have brought into his house today to worship the Lord with. Quickly package that, and as you do that, remember the understanding it must be a willing offering. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 29, he said, they brought a willing offering. Talking of every man and every woman uh, whose heart made them willing. Please do that. Let us rise on our feet and let's express our love and appreciation to God Raise your worship seed unto God, your tithe, your offering, and any other seed you have brought to honor the Lord with. Lift it out to him and begin to tell him that you love him and that you are willing and that you are obedient. Begin to let him know, remembering that the Lord God of heaven is the one that blesses. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We celebrate you again for this privilege. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be thy holy name in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The worship seed in your hand is blessed. And he said, because you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's have our seat and we we'll cast our seed with joy as the choir ministers.
come from glory to glory. Lift your hand to heaven and begin to appreciate God this morning for the awesome privilege to be in his presence. This is the second to the last Sunday of this great year. God has been faithful from the start till now. Let's appreciate him for the privilege to be in his presence this morning in the sanctuary, celebrating his goodness and giving him glory. Lift your voice and give him praise. He's worthy of all praise, glory, and adoration. Celebrate him. It's a good thing to give thanks and to give praises unto his name. Appreciate him. Celebrate him. Blessed is the man that he chooses and he causes to approach unto him, that he may fill him with the goodness of his house. Lift your voice and give him thanks. God selected you to be in his presence today. Appreciate him and give him the glory. Lord, I thank you for selecting me to be in your presence today, to be in your house today. I don't take it for granted. I give you the praise and the glory. Blessed be your holy name. Now begin to ask him for an encounter. Lord, give me an encounter this morning, one that will change my story forever, one that will clean me up forever, that will transform me supernaturally, that will break the hold of every iniquity and establish me, Lord, in your plan and purpose for glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I received this, this morning an encounter with you on the basis of your word for a transformation, for a, uh, for a rejuvenation, for a cleansing, for sanctification. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks this morning for, your, for the privilege you have given to us. Your word said, blessed is the man that you choose and you cause to approach unto you that you may fill him with the goodness of your house. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us to be in your presence today. Accept our thanksgiving in the precious name of Jesus. Let everyone here today, Lord, encounter you by your word and let every life be changed supernaturally. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand and you may please take your seat in God's presence this morning. I want to give God glory for the privilege to stand before you upon this exalted altar today to share God's word, a privilege given by God through his servant, our Father, which I do not take for granted. And I pray that the grace that is at work on his life will speak to each one of us here today in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through this month, we began looking at this series of teachings on the first Sunday, Sanctification, the Covenant Gateway for Glorification. And we are looking in this fourth service at part to um, D of this series. We have established that the glory of God at work in the life of a believer is in degrees. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41, the Bible said, there is one glory of the sun, there is another glory of the moon, and there is another glory of stars. He said, but one star differed from another in glory. So, the glory of God that is at work on the life of a believer is in varying degrees. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us an ex a far exceeding weight, an eternal weight of glory. So the glory of God at work in the life of a believer is in degrees. The glory of God at work in the life of a believer is in different weights. And the good news is that the uh, intention of God is to see each one of us continually increase in the dimension of his glory that we reflect. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible said, We all with open face, beholding us in a glass, he said, The glory of the Lord, we are changing to the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the glory of God is not just a specific destination, but a journey in which we increase in brightness from day to day. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light. It shines more and more unto the perfect day. So there is more glory to see. Whatever glory you have seen today, God is saying that there is greater weights available. Whatever glory you have seen so far, God is saying there is a brighter realm available. And I see you getting there in the name of Jesus. I said, I see you getting there in the name of Jesus. However, we have discovered that every desire of man is at the mercy of a demand from God. Until you meet the demand of God, you do not experience the desire of your heart. 
And the demand of God for the experience of the glory of God is the demand of sanctification. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21, it said, The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, let every man that named the name of God depart from iniquity. This is the foundation. Until sanctification is in place, man has not begun his journey into glorification. It says in verse 20, it says, For in a great house there are not only vessels of gold, but there are vessels of silver. There are also vessels of wood and vessels of earth. Some are to honor and some to dishonor. If a man will purge himself of this, it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. I'd like you to understand this. He said in a great house, that is signifying the house of God. It means in God's house there are both vessels of honor and also vessels of dishonor. Not because God discriminated against one or the other, but by the individual's choice for sanctification. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? It's important for us to recognize, therefore, that every individual's ultimate glorification is determined by their decision for sanctification. Until you make a decision for sanctification, glorification cannot be your experience. He said, in the great house, it is God's house. But inside God's house, there are vessels of honor and there are also vessels of dishonor. Every individual determines the kind of vessel they are by their decision for sanctification. I pray for you this morning that God will empower you to take a stand for sanctification in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe and say a loud amen. amen. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible tells us there, he said, and be ye holy. He said, for I am holy. We must understand that the exhibition of holiness or the exhibition of of sanctification to our world is God's desire of us. That is why the Bible said that this is the will of God, even your sanctification. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, he said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. God's desire is for every one of his children to exhibit sanctification as a lifestyle. And we remember that until the will of God is done, you cannot obtain the promise. He said, cast not away your confidence. He said, because it has within a great recompense of reward. He said, for you have need of patience after you have done the will of God that you may obtain the promise. What God is saying to us is that no matter how confident you are in sin, you have no reward with him. No matter how confident you are in sin, that is, no matter how bold you seem, if you are in sin, there is no reward with him. It means that every individual's reward is at the mercy of their decision for sanctification. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, he said, be ye perfect as I am perfect. What does this mean to us? It, it means that with every redeemed child of God, there is the potential for perfection. Within every redeemed child of God, there is the potential for holiness. Within, within every redeemed child of God, there is a potential for sanctification. This is so critical. God will never demand from you what you cannot deliver. So he must have put the potential there for him to demand it of you. If he said, be holy, it means that you and I as children of God have the capacity to live holy. If he said be perfect, it means that we have the capacity to live perfect. And I believe God for each one of us that in this season, the grace to reveal that which God has deposited in us as potential shall be released upon each one of us in Jesus' name. I said the grace to reveal that which God has deposited in us as potential shall be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. I said somebody believe it, say loud amen. However, it's important that we must begin to press into greater realms of sanctification in order to attain greater dimensions of glory. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible tells us there, it said, I press towards the mark for the prize. I'm not pressing for nothing. I'm pressing for something. I'm pressing for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize. I'm not running for nothing. We have to come to the point where we recognize that we are not running for nothing. We are running for a prize, and that prize is only received when we hit the mark. 
may no one here miss the mark. I said, may no one here miss the mark. So there must be a crave from within. A desire inside of your heart to hit the mark. A desire to press, to hit the mark and attain the prize that God has in store for us. And like we have been told in earlier services today by God's servant, that is not only here in this temporary realm, but also there in eternity. Sanctification is one of the vital necessities, not only for living here on earth, but also attaining the glory of God there in eternity. And no one here will miss that in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You believe me, say loud, amen. We must, however, understand that every promise of God is naturally resisted by the enemy. Every promise, every potential of the sin is naturally resisted by the devil. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, he said, And the dragon, speaking of the devil, was wrought with the woman. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. He said, And uh, which keep the commandment of God, and they that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You must understand that your association with Christ naturally made you an enemy of the devil. So whatever potential God has packaged for you, the devil seeks to resist it. That's why the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil goes around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. So we must recognize that we have a, a sworn enemy. His name is called Satan. And he manifests himself in trying to put enmity between you and God. The cheapest way for him to defeat you is to make God your enemy. And what he tries to do is to introduce iniquity. Because iniquity is what makes man an enemy of God. But I pray for somebody here this morning that every such attempt of the devil shall be frustrated today. The Bible said the great door and effectual is open unto us. That door opened at redemption. He said, but there are many adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. There are many oppositions. There are many resistances. But every one of those resistances today shall be brought down in the name of Jesus. We have discovered that these resistances are not natural. They are not physical. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are all spiritual personalities. And when it comes to the arena of man's sanctification, there are certain specific personalities that challenge man's stand with God. One of them we refer to as the spirit of the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12, the Bible said, We have not received the spirit which is of this world. So there is a spirit of the world. There is a spirit of the world. What is in the world? 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 down to verse 17. He said, Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not with him. In other words, that spirit makes him become an enemy of God. He said in verse 16, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He said, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And in verse 17, he goes on to tell us there, he said, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. In other words, every lover of the world, Man, he manifests himself in these three dimensions the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes and the pride of life the loss of the eyes people who cannot see something without uh, without envying it every little thing you see something your eyes begin to chase after it the loss of the flesh whatever satisfies the flesh you go after it naturally and the loss of and the pride of life the inability to be teachable arrogance pride all of these are located in the world, and the Bible said the world passeth away. And everyone who loves it will also pass away with it. He said, but he that keepeth the commandment of God, he abideth forever. I pray for somebody here today that every hold. Number two, we also have the lying spirit. The lying spirit. First Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 23. He said, I will go into them and I will be in their mouth a lying spirit. That is, the, that spirit gives them the capacity to naturally lie. The person lies with ease. Lies without struggle. Lies flow out of the individual without any struggle. It is a spirit. It is what? There is no pressure yet. Lies are coming out. 
it is a spirit at work making that individual negatively creative how many of you know that line takes some level of creativity and that is a negative demonic dimension of creativity to be able to fabricate things that align so that people cannot even discover when it is a lie or it is truth that takes some demonic dimension of creativity and that is the work of a lying spirit for anybody here under the sound of my voice that is under the oppression of a lying spirit by the encounter you are having here today that force is destroyed in the name of jesus i remember he said that he that tells lies will not tarry in my presence in other words it makes you an enemy of god it makes you an enemy of god and that is the target of the enemy please hear this and hear it very well the devil does not need to to struggle against an individual that has made themselves an enemy of god the devil does not need to struggle against any individual that has made themselves an enemy of god think about it if god becomes your enemy who will be your helper that has put you in danger when god is your enemy then no one can help you but today i pray for somebody here that everything that makes you an enemy of god in terms of iniquity and sin shall be broken off your life forever <laughs> number three is the spirit of wardoms the spirit of wardoms sexual perversion what a force at work in our generation today the spirit of wardoms sexual perversion in Hosea chapter 5 and verse 4, the Bible says there, it said, and they would, they would not frame their doings, it said, for the spirit of wardoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known God. We have had so many testimonies, different kinds and different dimensions. Individuals that have been captives of, uh, you know, of masturbation, captives of all kinds of forces that are simply sexual, sexually perverse forces. And we're in a generation where that is so rampant. Today, you find people carrying phone. Not everybody is using it for telephone call. There are some people using it to connect with all kinds of evil images. All kinds of evil images. A young lady was speaking to somebody some time ago, and she said, she said to this pastor, she said, Pastor, this phone is my worst devil. Everywhere I go, he said, as long as this phone is with me, there is an introduction of evil. Because the phone was for her a connection to evil images. Everywhere she went, the urge will come and the access was present. Please make no mistake, the, the, the advancement of, techno of technology is not only access to comfort, but also access to evil. Access to what? Access to evil. Somebody can sit down in a car and just simply download one evil thing or the other by just one telephone, wherever he is. That is simply the spirit of wardoms at work in our midst. But I pray for somebody here today that by the encounter you are having here upon this mountain, every such motion of the flesh shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. So we can see very clearly that we are fighting a battle against spiritual personalities. And these personalities are there to infringe upon our sanctification and break our access to communion with god but that attempt of the devil over your life is broken forever so the question is how do you overcome temptation how do you overcome it if it is so real if the devil oppressed by each one of these personalities then how do you overcome temptation number one is engage in continuous spiritual exercise engage in continuous spiritual exercise it is important for us to recognize that our exercise is what determines our excellence in acts chapter 24 and verse 16 it said herein do i exercise myself to always have a conscience that is void of offense towards god and towards men I exercise myself in order not to offend God, nor offend men. This is so important. So it takes spiritual exercises to stay sanctified. The exercise of prayer, the exercise of fasting, 
the exercise of study, the exercise of praise. Every one of these exercises are critical to maintain your sanctification. If you understand that, say a loud amen. Many of us know that in a season like this, there are so many people traveling back and forth. People going to their hometowns, going to their villages and so forth. And in some of those places, there are thick, you know, dominance of darkness. Individuals there that will make evil suggestions. And while the devil is making that the peak of his activity, there are many Christians who also make that the list of their spiritual activities. They travel out, prayer is counseled. They travel out, every other thing goes out of the way. Why is that so? Because the devil knows if he can make them have laxity, his activity can take the peak. It can take the throne in that, in that individual's life. But for any, everyone under the sound of my voice today, there is no activity of the devil that will prevail over your life. Yeah. Spiritual exercise. You must remain fervent and hot. God's servant, our father, has said so many times to us, he has said that, you see, he said, spiritual vacuum is a risk to have a vacuum spiritually is risky you cannot afford it that's why you must maintain fervency let your spirit man be hot always the bible said in first timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8 it said bodily exercise profits little he said but godliness is profitable unto all things having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. In other words, your exercise of godliness guarantees you the promises of God now and also the promise of God in eternity. Please make no mistake. I want you to understand this. There is no way to have association with God while still having association with sin. The Bible makes it very, very clear. He said, the hand of God is not short that it cannot save. His ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity have put a gap between you and me. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2. God cannot maintain association with iniquity. This is so important. Let no one deceive you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 7. He said, beloved, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth right. So don't excuse any sin. Don't give it a reason to remain. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. And in verse 8 goes on to tell us, he said, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose came the son of man that he may destroy the works of the devil. And in verse 9, he goes on to tell us, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed of God is in him. He said, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. And look at verse 10. He says, and you, and, and, in these little children are manifest the children of God and the children of the devil. He said, that's how you know them. You know the children of God by their manifestation of righteousness. You know the children of the devil by the manifestation of their sinfulness. That is why you cannot keep claiming that you are the righteousness of God when you are demonstrating the un unrighteousness of hell. You cannot claim it. The righteousness of God should be demonstrated by practical manifestations of holiness. Hear this and hear it very well. This is so important. So never excuse it. Don't look at the devil taking a hold on any area of your life and continue to accept it. You take a stand. Lord, I am, if I'm indeed born of you, then this siege must stop. Satan, you must take your hand off me. This lying tongue must come to an end. And you start the day by attacking it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You start by attacking it. There are so many Christians who leave their exercise until they are attacked. Don't wait until the attack comes. Stand up early in the morning. Lord, this morning, I decree that it is for me a day of holiness. I decree that it is for me a day of sanctification. And maybe you don't even know where the devil is going to come from. That's why you have spirit praying in the Holy Ghost. You begin to pray in tongues. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So you wake up in the morning and you begin to blast in the Holy Ghost. As you are doing that, what you are simply doing is you are spraying insecticide to every one of the demon cockroaches that are coming in your direction. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. So you engage in continuous spiritual exercises. If you understand that, say loud amen. It's important for us to know that those exercises must not be occasional, but they must be continual. They must be what? 
If you get around God's servant, our Father, and the Lord, you will hear him continuously always praying in the Holy Ghost. He may be having a conversation with you, and he will switch off. and pray in the Spirit and continue the conversation. What he's doing is he's praying all manner of his exercises in the area. Blasting every one of the demon cockroaches and mosquitoes that are coming to lay spiritual afflictions upon him. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. And you and I both know that even as an individual, when you hear somebody blasting in the Holy Ghost while having a conversation, it is not likely that you will say anything that is iniquitous. Is that true? Uh, even sinful conversation will be purged. Your own tongue, by the tongue that is speaking, is naturally purged because he has exercised himself. Please hear this and hear it very well. I believe that it is an abomination for any sinner to look at you and introduce something that is sinful to you. It means they can't see God in you yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I heard God's servant say to us, he said, what devil can ask me for a bribe? That means that they have seen a fire inside the spirit. They have seen a light shining there. I pray for you that beginning from this month, people will see that light shining in you. I said people will see that light shining in you. I said people will see that light shining in you. That will be your own experience. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Some time ago, I was out on outreach, and as I was out there in, in London, somebody, I was approaching somebody to try and minister to him, and he looked at me, and he said to me, me and my partner who were out there on, on, on outreach, he looked at me and said, you are a Christian. I said, how do you know? He said, I see a light around you. Every time you find your spirit on fire, your life is unapproachable by evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? I pray that God will ignite somebody's spirit here today. But what does it take? Continuity in spiritual exercises. Number two, you crave the baptism of the spirit of obedience. You do what? You crave the baptism of the spirit of obedience. In Hebrews chapter 12, beginning from verse 1 down to verse 4, the Bible tells us there, it said, Wherefore seeing that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, it said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and as we are running he said be looking unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was before him he endured the cross he despised the shame and now he is seated at the right hand of god he said now consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be weary and faint in your mind and verse 4 he said ye have not resisted unto blood in striving against sin the race he was talking about in verse 1 is a fight against sin so sanctification is a spiritual race and it is there for prize winners and the bible said as you are running the race look at jesus the man who suffered contradiction from sinners you can't be in association with God and not be in contradiction to sinners. It is natural. If you are in association with God, you will naturally be in contradiction with sinners. And he said, when you see that, let your mind not be weary. Because you have not yet strived unto, unto blood in resisting sin. I'd like you to understand this morning, God is simply saying to us that we have to crave the same spirit that was in Jesus. And what was that spirit? It was the spirit of obedience. In John chapter 8 and verse 29, he said, he said, he that sent me is still with me. The father has not left me alone. Why? For I do always, not sometimes, but always, I do always the things that please him. You remember what God testified of Jesus? He did it three times. He testified of him. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And here the scripture says Jesus showed us why God was pleased with him. Because I do always, I do always the things that please him. I'd like you to understand that when your commitment to please God is set, then God's time for your glory is there. And here's the thing. It takes the spirit of obedience to enjoy commitment to obedience at all times and at all costs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It makes obedience a delight. In Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27, he said, I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. When I put this spirit in you, it will become natural. It will become natural. You will always want to do what I say. 
This is why the Bible said there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from sin and death. If you are going to be free from sin, it will take the spirit of obedience empowering you. Lift your right hand to heaven and say, Lord, release that spirit upon me. Like you mean it again, Lord, release that spirit upon me. One more time, Lord, release that spirit upon me. Number three, keep the right company. Keep the right company. God's servant and father has said so many times, who you company with determines what accompanies you. If you stay with a white garment around people that came out of mud, it's a matter of time. You also be muddy. In the same way, if your friends are those who are still in the mud of sin, then sin will also come near you. You must understand that it is our duty to sanitize our environment by, you know, by, by disconnecting from wrong associations. First Corinthians 15.33, be not deceived. He said, evil communication corrupts good manners. If your friend is a thief, then it's likely that you start stealing. If your friend is a liar, then it's likely that you start lying. If your friend is a womanizer, then it's likely that you start womanizing. The truth is this. Your association determines your manifestation. Your association determines your manifestation. If you don't check your association, you cannot gauge your manifestation. It is your association that determines your manifestation. I pray that God will empower somebody because there are people here today that you need to go back after this service and make some definite disconnections. There are people who are there to tarnish your destiny. And here it is, I've discovered that those who tarnish destinies also watch the destruction of the destinies. They celebrate it. They are the ones who announce it. Can you believe what happened to him? Can you believe what happened to her? No one will celebrate your downfall. I said no one will celebrate your downfall. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, we meet the son of David, Amnon, beginning from verse 1. And the Bible tells us Amnon had this evil desire, but he had a friend. The friend of Amnon was this young man called Jonadab. Jonadab was an evil friend, a counselor in evil directions. And he counseled Amnon until Amnon committed sin and Amnon was killed. At the death of Amnon, Jonadab was the one who went to announce to his father. Father, relax. It's not all your children that died. It's only one. It's Amnon. His friend, he went to announce his destruction. Please hear this. Anyone who introduces evil to you is not your friend. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is not your friend at all. That is a destiny enemy. But I pray that God will give you the grace and the discernment to discover and to disconnect from them. Yeah. Number four. Put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 12 verse 13. Put on the armor of... That talks about walking in the light. Walking in the light. Operating by the word of God at every point in time. Remember in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. When you are well lighted by revelation. And you are walking in that light. Then you find yourself cheaply out of every oppression of iniquity and of sin. Remember in Isaiah chapter 35 beginning from verse 8. The Bible says there that there is a highway that shall be there. It is called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the people who fear God, who commit themselves to the law of God. He said, even if they are fools, they will not make mistakes there. Because they are operating in the light of his word. I see somebody here operating in the light of God's word in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I'd like us to remember that part of God's weaponry given to us for us to dominate the war against sin is the weaponry of the mysteries of the kingdom. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3, beginning from verse 8 down to verse 11, the Bible tells us there, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. He said, and to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery, 
which from the beginning of the world was hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And it goes on to tell us, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers, he said, in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Those are the mysteries of God. They are the wisdom of God to dislodge the attack of the devil. What are some of these mysteries? We'll take a few of them quickly. Number one, we have the mystery of the communion, which is what we are receiving here today. And I see that mystery turning everyone here into a warrior against sin and bringing you to the place of victory in the name of Jesus. Number two, we also have the mystery of the blood of sprinkling. And the blood of sprinkling is there to dislodge every attack of the enemy. He said they overcame him by the blood and by the word of their testimony. Rome, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 and 13. The Bible tells us when the blood came on the scene. He said that I will, I will execute judgment against the God of Egypt. Those are the forces of defilement that makes a believer live an Egyptian life. A life of sin. I will execute judgment against them. By the invocation of the blood. I see the blood also answering for you and judging every defiler of destiny in the name of Jesus. Number three, we have the mystery of the feet washing. When Jesus was washing the feet and Peter resisted, Jesus said, if I wash you not, you have no part in me. Peter said, wash my whole body, my head, my hands, my entire body. And Jesus said, if I wash your feet, he said, you are made clean every week. I clean you totally by this mystery of the washing of the feet. And finally, we have the mystery of the anointing oil. Remember, it is the mystery of the fan and fire. God packages what is good in you and preserves it by this mystery. And also takes out what is bad and burns it off by the fire of the Holy Ghost. As we begin to engage these mysteries, I see God empowering each one of us here for dominion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, what is in the communion to empower us for a sanctified life? Quickly, let us take a few of them. John chapter five, chapter 6, sorry, and verse 57. When we partake of the communion, he said, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he shall live by me. He shall live by me. So it empowers us to live like him. Number one, it empowers us to live like him. Number two, the communion spiritually transfuses us with eternal life. That is incorruptible life. John chapter 6 verse 54 and 55. He said, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. So it transfuses us with incorruptible life. And number three, when we take it in faith, it delivers from death. When we take it in faith, it delivers from death. And death there, among others, talks about the end of sin. The Bible tells us in John chapter 6 verse 58, it says that when we partake of it, it said, He that eateth it shall live forever. And Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So the contrary, the, what, what is the antidote for sin and death is simply eternal life. And we renew it by the communion table. Finally, number four, the blood purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. It purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I see the blood purging your conscience today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You find that in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. The good news is that the communion table not only cleanses our spirit, but also quickens our mind and cleanses our body. So if you came here with any sickness or with any disease, I see you being supernaturally cleansed in the name of Jesus. If your mind needed to be quickened, I see it being quickened by the communion table in the name of Jesus. And whatever is polluting your spirit, I see it being purged by the communion table in the name of Jesus. One of the benefits of sanctification is divine protection. Is what? Divine protection. Psalm 125, we're ready for our call to worship, beginning from verse 1 down to verse 3. The Bible tells us, it said, They that trust in the Lord, they shall be as Mount Zion that shall never be moved, but they abide forever. He said, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is around his people, even henceforth and forever. And verse 3, He will not permit the rod of the wicked 
to rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put their hands into iniquity. That is one of the vital cardinal benefits of our commitment to sanctification. And what good news in this season, that as you are going back and forth, as you have committed to God in this season, there will no evil come near you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody believe God, say a loud amen. Before we conclude this morning, if you are here today and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, I tell you, you are running at a risk. God brought you here for just that purpose. The year is almost ending, but you can start fresh with God today. Wherever you are, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, and you want to do so this morning, rise on your feet very quickly. Everywhere, wherever you are today, rise on your feet. This is your day. This is your day. This is your hour, and this is your moment. Rise on your feet quickly all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Certain things have polluted you. They have disconnected you. You can feel that there is no association with God. These things have made you an enemy of him. God is saying it's not too late. You can return so that you can be restored. Everyone in that category, please rise up on your feet quickly. All over this place, rise on your feet quickly. God bless you. All over this place, rise on your feet quickly. And if you have done that, quickly move to the hand that is closest to you. Move to the hand that is closest to you. This day is your day. God has marked it for your change of story. Move to the hand that is closest to you. Officials are there to assist you. And as soon as you get there, I'd like you to lift up your right hand. Please stop filling the forms for a moment. Lift up your right hand where you are. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. But I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hand as I pray. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have drawn them today out of darkness and translated them to the kingdom of your dear son. Let every hold upon their life be broken. Lord, give each one the grace, not only to run for this day, but all the days of their life serving you. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Please fill out your forms and make sure it is given to the officials that are beside you. Everyone rise on your feet right now as we welcome our Father to come and take us further in this service. You are blessed. Give Jesus a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. Lift up your two hands and appropriate for yourself whatever God and the Holy Spirit have spoken to you in the course of that teaching. Jesus, I'm taking my stand against sin and unrighteousness today. I can't afford to miss out of the awesome benefits that accrue to one that is living a sanctified life. Jesus, I receive right now a fresh endowment of the spirit of obedience that obeying you will become a delight to my soul, a delight to my spirit. Grace to walk in the light of scriptures the remaining days of my life I receive. Grace to be perfect in doing your will and doing those things that are pleasant in your sight. I receive it right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Your choice is loaded with power. Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. And Joshua said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God said to them, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today as I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose a life that you may live. I'd like you to engage that power of choice and make declarations to heaven right now saying my 
choice is made to live a sanctified life. I choose to live free from everything that defies. I make my choice in faith and based on the revelation of what redemption offers me. Therefore, I'm free. Free from all corruptions. Free from all corruptions. That your mind, the testimony said, my salvation was fake. My salvation was fake. Then he got it right someday. Lord, I'm getting it right today. To please you shall be my utmost desire all the days of my life. Everything that corrupts and defies, I despise them and discard of them today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Please let the stewards take their positions right now around the communion table as we are set to serve it. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now, from this table we'll understand from the message this afternoon that we are empowered to live like Christ. Just look at any issue around your life that doesn't look like Christ and say, no, you are illegal. You can't have a hold on me anymore. I'm walking free from you today by the power of the blood. Look at anything that does not reflect eternal life and say, no, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I have right with God to manifest the realities of eternal life in my life. Hallelujah. This is so important. Where are you standing? Lift up your two hands and look up to heaven. I begin to make declarations. Declarations concerning your sanctification. Looking at the mystery of the communion table for your freedom and liberty. That by the power of the blood, every of my taste for sin is declared dead. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm walking in triumph from today. Walking in triumph from today. I'm walking in triumph from today. I'm walking in triumph from today. Zezuru Sharabarada Lukrektenebarua. I'm walking in triumph from today. In Jesus precious name we have prayed I decree today that from this table that the entire spirit, soul and body of everyone partaking of this be sanctified holy yeah. I pray that every rod of the magician moving around anyone's body every poison that's tormenting an individual at the instance of this communion, every victim is declared free. Yeah. As we partake of this communion table today, every form of mental blockade, spiritual blindness, is declared here in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We partake of this blood today and this bread, and we receive grace to live like Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. No one shall miss out of his portion in the year 2016. Yeah. Everything that sin may have robbed any one of us of till date is declared restored. Yeah. The heavy weight of glory reserved for us in 2016, no one here shall miss it. Yeah. Lord, turn every one of us to a living wonder to ourselves in the year 2016. Yeah. Take all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Please get seated as we serve the table of the Lord right now and expect to receive as you have declared. Whatever you have declared today is a testimony in your hand. We have overcome. We 
overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the walls of the Lord. We have overcome. We have overcome. the depth of your heart I am overcome by the blood of the Lord the spellless blood I am overcome say like you mean it I am overcome no matter the situation I am overcome Lord of Jesus, give me victory. The and the word of the Lord, I am overcome. I am overcome. Yes, I am victorious over every devil. Whoa. By the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus set me free. of this world, I am overcome, no more, no more, the wheel of the flesh, and the word of the Lord. From the depth of your I am, I am overcome. No man has a situation I have overcome. I am overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of the Lord, I have no man on the bondage. No man, no one. Say it. I have overcome. Let the world of the devil and the world of the flesh and the world. The life and the pride of the life and the pride of the I am free forever. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus made me whole. The blood of Jesus made me whole. I am whole. I am whole. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus made me whole. The blood of Jesus set me free. He made me whole. I am whole. He has washed me from every words of the wicked one. The Lord of yes, Jesus me He made me all, He made me cleanse. The Lord of Jesus makes me whole. I am purified by the blood of the Lamb. He made me whole. The Lord of Jesus yes. makes me whole. No more the work of flesh anymore. The Lord of Jesus yes, makes me 
Celebrate Jesus right now. Magnify him for his goodness in our life. Celebrate him. Lift him up on high. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. One of the spiritual characteristics of the year 2016 is uncheckered access to divine secrets. What do I call it? And that requires that we possess our vessels in sanctification and honor. Because the Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. He will show them what to do for him to move. He will show them what to do for him to lift them. The year 2016 is a year of strange liftings. Strange liftings. And it shall be mainly through access to divine secrets. Strange change of levels. If you believe you are part of that army, let me hear your loudest amen. We'll be trading divine secrets like currency. God told me. God showed me. That will become the lifestyle of every true winner in the year 2016. Job said, as it, I was in the days, days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Others were busy trading their skill. Job was trading divine secrets, and he became the greatest of them all. But whatever is from above is above all. Whatever is from above is above all. I decree that nothing will impede or stand in the way of your access to divine secret in 2016. Yeah. It's starting right from now. I mean, if you know what you are losing when you live in a careless life, you will warn yourself. No, I can't afford to. Apart from heaven, our ultimate goal, there are things I'm losing out here tremendously when I walk in darkness. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every defilement that disqualifies people for access to divine secret, you are declared free from them. You are declared free from them. If you check the difference between one believer and another, is. There are different levels of access to divine secrets. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Access to divine secrets is what distinguishes one believer from another. Because every divine secret makes a star. I mean, you can't access divine secret and be normal and be natural and be in the midst of the peers. Your peers. It distinguishes you. Divine secret will make a star of any domain will make a star of any domain. Divine secret will make a star of any domain. Now watch. There shall be a rise of army of stars in this church in 2016. <laughs> Say with me, my birthright is precious to me. I refuse to sell off like Esau. My birthright is precious to me. I shall jealously guard it. Amen. Please don't forget that Friday, 
25th, we are having a wholesome celebration here. It's a celebration service. We are celebrating the gift of Jesus to the world and what that means to your life. How many know how much Christ means to them? Has he imparted your life in any way? Without Jesus, where would you and me be today? So we are coming to celebrate that gift of God to the world and that gift of God to your life and my life. So come dressed for a Jesus party. Come to celebrate with heavens the gift of God on the earth. Come gorgeous. Come dressed. Come set to just acknowledge God for his great gift to mankind. And on Sunday, next Sunday, we're having our global end of year thanksgiving service it's always the end the last sunday of every year and so another celebration galore come prepared to give it back to god all that he meant to you this year you are bouncing around out here now many of you have never seen the four walls of any hospital throughout the year you have not become an emergency issue i mean you have food to eat on your table you have where to lay your heads down you have children, you are raising them. But God has been so kind to you. So whatever hand of God you have seen since the year began, let's come and acknowledge that in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have two major celebrations ahead of us. Christmas celebration and then the global end of the year Thanksgiving service. We are all coming to celebrate Jesus and dress gorgeously. Dress like one going to the king's palace. Dress to meet the king of kings and the Lord of Lords, and they will beautify you and glorify you. Lift up your two hands for every one of our members of this family that has traveled, they are all arriving safely. For those who may still be traveling, you are arriving your destination safely. Everybody returns, not one is permitted to be missing in the name of Jesus. Within the city, outside the city, within the country, outside the country, everyone that has gone on any vacation right now is declared covered for safe return in the name of jesus so shall it be this week is still declared a week of testimonies for you before this year runs up whatever remains as your portion is declared delivered many will still testify of miracle jobs Many will see 35 of business breakthroughs. Many will see 35 of their healing and health. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Just a minute. Remember, in case you are out of town, you sh shouldn't be out of touch. Everybody must find his way to church on Sunday. Our churches are all over the country and beyond. You must be in church. You mustn't be found somewhere whiling away with the enemy. You must be found in church celebrating the gift of Christ. On Sunday, you must find yourself to church to give thanks to God for the year, thereby setting the stage for next year. Nobody will miss it in Jesus' name. We have two services so we can have enough hours to eat and drink and eat and drink and eat and drink, go to the toilet, come back and eat again, go back and eat again. But you must be in church first, either for the first service or second service. Jesus is Lord. From glory to glory. I can't hear you. And from glory to glory. One more time, from glory to glory, and from glory to glory, help me congratulate your neighbor to your right and to your left. Please, before you leave, for emphasis, the church calendar for the year is out, and January shows you the Miracle Faith Theater, so it can boost your faith as you walk through the year. The stickers are also there, you are going from glory to glory. Place it on your door, place it on your car. Jesus is Lord. Congratulations. Please, please hold it. We are announcing the fourth service.
throughout the remaining days of this year, you are taking communion to bed every night. You are taking communion to bed every night in your various homes. That will fortify you for sanctified life. And all through the year 2016, there shall be no spiritual accident. Whatever choice you made will be made manifest in testimony. In Jesus' name, every night, you have friends who are not in town, text them and let them know that is the order for the hour. Jesus is Lord. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations.